Welcome to Thought Crimes, everyone. This is your girl, Sincere. Hey, yo, this is your man, P. Solo, in the building, ladies and gentlemen. What's good? What's good? What is good? What is good, everyone? Shouts out to the wonderful people that decided to make it into the chat. Uh, before we actually begin, ladies and gentlemen, before we actually begin, I, I do want to make something clear. First and foremost, first and foremost, the main event, the main event, we're still going to be talking about J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. On Monday. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the main event. It's going to be on Monday. You all is going to have the best take. And I'm going to give a round of applause to Night Night. Shouts out to Night Night. Also known as uh, Madman 90. Madman 90. I got to give it to him, man. That man is persistent. Man, Prince, they going to fight. I'm like, all right, man, whatever. Prince, I'm telling you, they going to fight. So... Uh, upon further review, uh, I believe also shouts out to the channel What's the Dirt because uh, uh, Night Night he did inform us. He said, Hey guys, I check out only you and What's the Dirt. And he said, Please check out what What's the Dirt has to say about this. Mm -hmm. So I actually went over there to watch it. And a lot of the things that the homie uncovered, I says, Well, you know what? That does make sense. So the main event now, What's the Dirt? has his historical chronicle of what has taken place with Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. But y'all know how Sin and I give it to you like none other when it comes to the hip-hop breakdown. Max Kellerman, Jim Lampley. We are not Stephen A. Smith of the game when it comes to the UFC. We know what we're talking about, too, by the way, just to let everybody know. So it's going to be a spectacular breakdown. It's going to be a breakdown like no one other. And look, y'all know we're going to call the fight, too. I'm calling a fight. That's what I like to do. That was my favorite part of boxing. I mean, yeah, we get that Lennox Lewis and Tyson know how to box. But as a kid, some of the men that my mother dated, they said, hey, little nigga, who do you think is going to win? I said, Lennox Lewis. Ah, oh, shut up, little nigga. Hey, little nigga, knock and knock and he died. I don't know why. Yeah. I just thought about that in that yeah. way <laughs> with that yeah. Barney song when you <laughs> said that. Thank you for PBSing it up, Sam. <laughs> As usual, shouts out to a wonderful voice. But yes, they used to ask, hey, little nigga, what do you do? who do you think is going to win? I says, Lennox Lewis, shut up. You don't know nothing. Baby, get this boy out of here. He don't know nothing. About oh, shit. Lennox Lewis knocked out Tyson. I said, I told you. So we are going to call the fight. We're going to be talking about what went on with the brands and why, more than likely, this here is going to be a bit more of a darker battle than that of... Uh, Kendrick Lamar and Drake, that's over. That That's literally over. If if Drake takes any shot, it will always be seen as petty. But J. Cole and K-Dot, that is a bohemian. But again, on Monday at 9 a.m., mark it down on your calendar, Monday at 9 a.m., you see the verses, sitting there, we, look, we're going to have our due diligence. It's going to be a very engaging, interactive live stream. And then on top of that, if I feel like it, I will be taking calls. Sin and I will be taking calls. And I just want to see. We're going to no, be doing will. polling. We we'll let people vote. Yeah. If this I does happen, to, who would win? I got to give it to Night Night. Persistent as hell. I was like, man, what you talking about? They go to the same beautician. How them niggas going to fight? <laughs> they got the, the same hairstyle. Now, uh, transitioning uh, over to our esoteric Patreon stream. Yes, yes, We yes. will be live tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. on our esoteric stream. We also have Be More Esoteric Cryptocurrency Breakdown as well that yes. is already uploaded to our, our Esoteric Cheering Up and already on her own Patreon as well. So 7 o'clock p.m., we're going to be talking about Nickelodeon. We've been talking about the disgusting behavior of Nickelodeon for seven years now. Well, hold on, we Sid. I think, I think M. Flint got something to say. Okay. I think, oh, yeah, we actually right. got, a, we got a commercial a paid for by Be More. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. <laughs> Coming through your airways. Mm -mm. Nasty, Nasty, disgusting. Are you following me? Some, some sickening, sickening, disgusting news. I just, I just got through watching, watching. That, 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 nasty, that, that nasty, that nasty, that, 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 that dog, dog filth, filth disgusting, disgusting documentary, documentary about, about Dan, Dan Schneiderlin. Mm -hmm. This is as I thought a, a Schneider would pull, pull this off. off. This, this is disgusting, disgusting. That, that disgusting, disgusting. Wide, poor, poor belly, belly. X-Man, Bob, Bill, 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 Bill,
Prince, Prince Solomon, Solomon breaks, breaks down, down what's, what's going, going to be taking place, place concerning, concerning why these nasty, nasty brutes, brutes lord over children. children. Are you, Are you following? I bet, I bet you didn't, didn't know the esoteric meaning of Nickelodeon and how it ties into this dysfunctionality with the children. children. Let me, Let me guess, guess who is the CEO, CEO the Pied Piper himself? himself? It, it seems, seems like these sick, sick men have a thing, thing constantly, constantly with children and struggling tales of Hansel and Gretel. Dan Schneider, looking at his wide belly, how many children did he eat? Are you following me? Mm-mm-mm. Join us on Patreon. Join us Friday. That's Friday. That's Friday. That is going to be March 22nd at 7 p.m. And I... Ugh. I'm already getting sick, but I'm going to leave it to them three. They're better than me. I can't do it. All right. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Again, that will be that will be for the Patreon, too, by the way. And again, I'm going to run that one more time for the individuals out there, too, that are just sliding into the chat uh, concerning (laughs) Dan Nasty Ass Snyder. Yeah, man, disgusting. Flight. Had a tech issue. Yeah, come on. Well, you know, uh, most of the uh, pro tips will. Let's go. Coming through your airwaves. Mm-mm, nasty, disgusting. Are you following me? Some sickening, sickening, disgusting news. I just got through watching that nasty, that nasty, that dog filth, disgusting documentary about Dan Snyder. Mm-hmm. Just as I thought, a Snyder would pull this off. This is disgusting. That disgusting, wide, pork belly, X-Man blob built villain was out here hurting the little children. Are you following me? Join us on Patreon as b more sincere ignorance and Prince Solomon breaks down what's going to be taking place concerning why these nasty brutes lord over children. Are you following me? I bet you didn't know the esoteric meaning of Nickelodeon and how it ties into dysfunctionality with the children. Mm -mm. Let me guess who is the CEO, the Pied Piper himself? It seems like these sick men have a thing constantly with children and struggling tales of Hansel and Gretel. Dan Schneider, looking at his wide belly, how many children did he eat? Are you following me? Mm -mm -mm. Join us on Patreon. Join us Friday. That's Friday. That's Friday. That is going to be March 22nd at 7 p.m. And I, ugh, I'm already getting sick, but I'm going to leave it to them three. They're better than me. I can't do it. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We do definitely appreciate you. Again, that is going to be Friday. Um, On the 22nd at 7 p.m., we're going to take it a little bit further than what has been said online. As as far as I mean, you know, the revealing and the disgusting details, you all know what's going on. But, you know, the documentary they put out, please watch the multi series, the multi several part series. And look, y'all know how Dan Snyder was in trouble because he all dried up like beef jerky. Apologize. Well, I apologize for what I did to the kids. I apologize. And I I just want to make it clear I wouldn't be anywhere without the state of Israel. Uh, no. Uh, all right. I guess you. Yeah. What, like, what does the state of Israel, Israel have to do with you your, popping uh, children's come cherries? Come on now. That was allegedly. A, but see, you can't trust no grown man trying to dress like a fat fifteen-year-old. You know, in Sandman, there was a a pedo man who liked to um, mm-hmm. violate children, mm-hmm. and he dressed. He tried to dress like a, a a kid as well. Oh my goodness! You know, like a backpacker. Yeah, it just ruined all of the visual elements and iconography of Nickelodeon. You know, when I was, uh, well, you know, everybody was all growing up. I always thought Nickelodeon had some of the prettiest designs and it was very like Discovery Zone type energy. But now that you know what was going on, the crazy part about it saying, you know what? I never watched iCarly or any of those things like that, so I completely missed that train. A lot of uh, a lot of kids had them watching, you know, yeah. that show. I know one of my cousins liked right. iCarly and all that. It was something though about Nickelodeon that was off, and we're gonna break down the esoteric part of this yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. with Prince B. Moore and I tomorrow at seven o'clock p.m. You can also check out our older videos where we called out Nickelodeon's suspicious behavior. Also calling out some of the animators that was also perverted. Uh, we have uh, those old videos up for everyone to see on our Patreon as well. Y'all can yeah. go check that out. Man, so you know what? Oh, man, I'm so sorry about that AO dialogue. He said, man, why Dan Schneider from Memphis, though? Damn. I'm sorry about that, Blade, but it don't represent you or any connotation of the citizens of Memphis, too, by the way. We all know that young Dolph is the Memphis king and not 
fat, skinny ass Dan Schneider. But also, just to put out the point you made, that, that was very bizarre and weird that he did that bird call to Israel. Israel barely can help themselves right now. <laughs> Who they? How are they gonna have time protecting your little alleged pedo ass? They can't help him. They can't help him. They then then Yahoo him. already had bad press. What's that Drake? Uh, yeah. Bad bad press over yeah. the summer. Bad publicity all over the summer. <laughs> He's trying to throw up that bird call like that brother did when he threw that hat up in Alabama. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Boy. He think you he mean, Kevin yeah, Spacey? Yeah, he think he that boy in Alabama when he threw that hat up in the air. Well, you know, and them boys came and swam across. Ain't nobody coming across that ocean to swim and catch Don Snyder's ass. He he, he bird calling to the wrong people because Kevin Spacey made a bird call right to the UK. Uh, let's save our cousin who is related to the crown. You know what? Whereas uh, <laughs> Dan Snyder, you're going to jail. <laughs> Dan Snyder is broke. Uh, <laughs> That's why he came out and did that. See, if he really had that money like that, he wouldn't stud none of it. But you can tell he's struggling. You see how drawled up and shriveled he is? <laughs> I know. And you see that <laughs> ugly mustache? Yeah. That ugly beard and shit? Yeah. Oh. And now you wonder why your college like professor. <laughs> yeah. He do look like one of the... Pro he, Dan Schneider, to me, I think one of the reasons why they had the noise... Uh, his face to me, it was annoying about his face to me. He looks like one of the college professors that, you know, no matter what, they they just didn't really, you know, they act like they had an issue with you. But the whole time, all we had to do was search your computer. I know, and then he has that drug dealer goatee. <sighs> all right, we had to wonder who supplied Amanda Bynes. All I right? know, Amanda was supposed to be a superstar she you was know, she was a natural comedic act but you know who else went uh, crazy too bad you know people don't protect their kids and too bad amanda Bynes and kale hollywood uh allows for these people to be perverted as long as they're pro uh the political points that the people in power want them to be pro of like you said sometimes it could be being just simply pro israel sometimes mm -hmm. it could be uh being Pro the crown. Sometimes whatever it is, it's interesting how uh, these people get a pass if they. How you getting a pass? They they say their allegiance to something. How you getting a pass for being pro that Burger King crown? <laughs> you know that Burger King was selling horse meat allegedly. Y'all better yeah. stop eating from Burger King. Well, man, that was one of the <laughs> scariest faces I seen. Why they got all the creepy representation for the foods that y'all eating? McDonald's. Right? He looked like John Wayne Gacy. That is a good point. And then uh, uh, the Burger King crown looked like a serial killer. To say to your point, uh, because uh, Wayne was so popular and that guy who took over McDonald's all about money, it does feel like it's it, it -ish, yeah. Like the movie It. And and to your point with Burger King, he does look like a serial killer. He, he does. does. He also look like a serial rapist too. Oh well, yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't. Why does he walk around with his robe open? Right, like he's walking around. Well, uh, you know, looks crazy. <laughs> like a Hollywood exec. So right. Come it, on it, now. His son, son ain't right. I'm just telling you. And y'all putting that meat in your mouth. I'm telling you. All right, with Ronald McDonald, John Wayne Gacy, that's cannibal meat. <laughs> that's Jeffrey Dahmer meat. That's what it is. They eat meat. They eating ground up human beings. <laughs> yeah, so Dan Snyder can call out. He can shout out whoever he wants to. He broke. That's why he coming out to my. I apologize. Because whatever little quiet deals that he got left, he doesn't want these multi-series and these documentaries that are all over YouTube to destroy. And it's unfortunate because you've seen... You know, we always wonder why did Amanda Bynes go left? Because it looked like, you know, she was supposed to at the very least transition into some forms of films, some forms of Tom Greenish type, Jamie Kennedy type films. And then people's like, bro, what the hell happened to Kale Mitchell from Kenan and Kale? So as you can see, you know, uh, what's the other little boy, Justin? Well, Justin, there's, there's the Drake one. Bell that you talked about. Well, just Drake Bell. What's the he other? Said he was a, a touch by a choreographer. The acting coach. Yeah, that was the same. I think acting coach of Leonardo right. DiCaprio. Well, we so, already know what's going on there. Right. So uh, again, we're gonna take a further step into uh, that concerning Nickelodeon. We're gonna be talking about the the dark meanings behind it and and all of this other stuff that they. We're doing even some of the, the foot fetishes. It's just some crazy Tomorrow stuff. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. Yeah, 7 o'clock. Now we know the meaning of slime. Yeah. You know, that whole slime. Well, Drake had it right when he put it on Halle Berry's face. Right. See, he knew the meaning. He knew what it was. As a child star himself. But that does make sense because a lot of people be rapping talking about I slimed her out. Also, uh, Sean said you're talking about Josh uh, 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 Peck. Okay. 
Am I talking about Josh Pacheco? What's the black guy? You that, remember? No, as well. You said some Josh something. Someone yeah. said the whole name for you. Josh okay. Sean. Josh Peck. Well, let, me, let's see, let me let me Google that real quick. You you could be correct, uh, Sean, because y'all usually be very quick on point. So let me sidebar this real quick. Yeah, but again. Okay, again, not guys. him. That's Josh Peck, Drake. Bell. Okay, Josh, that's Drake. That's the one Sin is talking about. Yeah, that Josh is the one who was on the show with Drake. Right. There was another Drake, one. Drake Bell. There was another one. He was supposed to be behind Nick Cannon. Um, he had the braids in his head because this is when they was trying to find their next Will Smith. They had Nick Cannon, and then they had this boy from Nickelodeon. Yeah, he came out recently and said they destroyed his career because he didn't want nobody to have, to put their nasty. Uh, he said they didn't give up no ass. On them. Yeah, yeah, he said he ain't giving up no, no ass. ass. That's why the show got canceled. What was his name? You guys know him. He was actually funnier than Nick Cannon to me. No, he was. Look, uh, it also makes you question why Nick Cannon even tried to take over Nickelodeon. <sighs> Bro, I mean, you had to know what was going on over there. Were you trying to fix it? Well, or he, what you trying to capitalize? What you trying to do? He was an executive over there. He has nothing to say about it. Just like Kanye had nothing to say about Balenciaga when the news broke. Well, you I'm know, just saying. You know, with Kanye, he told Tiger he got in there young and early. So I don't, you can't trust. Yeah, when well, he said that she was seventeen, I said, you, "What does that you mean?" You can't trust none of these Hollywood people. No, they said before seventeen oh, with, with uh, Tiger. Like he that's got why Charlamagne was laughing at fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. Go ahead. Um, oh, they said little JJ. Thank you. Was talking about Prince. Yeah, that little nigga was funnier to me than Nick Cannon. Just and Jordan. Yeah, yeah, man. He was one of my favorites. Him, Action, not Action Jackson. What's the other one? Uh, Jet Jackson on Disney. You know, he committed suicide. I know. That was yeah. so sad. Man, I thought Jet Jackson. I thought we was going to get a movie. I thought so too, but yeah. again, that's one of the trafficking hubs, you know. Yeah, man. So I don't know why he committed suicide. Now that you look at all these acting coaches touching these young actors and actresses, you know, so it, it's definitely unfortunate. But Dan Schneider need to be taken out back and shot. Yeah, and we're talking about uh, 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 when it comes to the media. Yeah, yeah. We're well, talking about what people need to do. Oh, I get what you're saying. We're not. Yeah advocating for any violence towards him yeah we're not advocating for any safety towards him yeah All i right. know yeah whatever people do is your own free will but we're not advocating violence yeah. uh uh cartoon network does have the least amount of predators they only abuse animators i wouldn't say they all the way off you know because we do have one one guy who was having sex with a, a baby dog well guess what's in nah -uh. but nah -uh, sin. why he was on nickelodeon the one who was having sex John with John K. Dog? Yeah, but he was on. Oh, that. you talking about the other boy, Rick yeah, and Morty? Yeah, not Yeah, Rick and Morty. Oh uh, yeah, that, he's that's the only right, suspect yeah. one. Cartoon he's Cartoon dead. Network do have a better record. And they only again, like I said, they only abuse animators. But they don't uh, have adults. no live. They don't have no live action children shows. You know those. And I'm ones, glad they canceled them live action shows. They tried it one they time, tried it. and everybody, we were all saying boo. Yeah. Yeah, people was complaining. Kids were calling in. Get that shit off my yeah, screen. Yeah, get this shit off the screen. Because all you're going to do is violate children. Yeah, it's going to so, come. It's going to come. So, you know. So, everybody, 7 o'clock p.m. tomorrow on tomorrow. our Patreon. Exclusively on our Esoteric Terry Channel Tier. Patreon. So yeah, subscribe. I'm, get over there. So, I'm putting the link in the chat right now. Yeah, yeah, get ready. head over there. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun, y'all. We're, we're not having fun about this situation. I was about we're going to have say fun. <laughs> You know, I always you know, have fun with y'all anyway. Like, what are you talking about having fun? I don't mean Dan Snyder. <laughs> Can you imagine him hiding a child actor? And he's like, yeah, man, we're going to have fun. What you mean by that? <laughs> no, yeah. Jet Jackson was dope. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, Jet Jackson was dope. Orlando Brown was a favorite out of all. Fillmore was my favorite Disney kid. You know what's crazy? I only parked it on Cartoon, Cartoon Network. I, I didn't go any further. Because I, I, Nickelodeon... Um, all that was good, but once you get older, you start seeing like Amanda Bynes go wild, and then Kale Mitchell starts acting you, wild. I told you that's why I never liked those live yeah. actors. I said the only one that did get me was all that. They had a dope intro. The kids were funny by TLC and uh, by TLC who did the intro, and mm -hmm. that, and that was it. I never watch. I didn't watch none of the Disney or the other Nickelodeon, or none of the live action because it was always something weird. Like even when I was watching, you didn't like Kablam. I didn't watch none of it. I did watch Kablam. Now, I did watch the Nickelodeon movie with the burgers. You talking about Good Burger? Good Burger, yeah. Can I take your order? That was funny, but... Welcome to Good Burger. Something was just always mm. off because it's like... Yeah. It's like even when they talk about R. Kelly... I mean, see? Damn. See, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Yeah, the spirit the of what is. Is this shit is about. <laughs> I said R. Kelly. Even when they talk about I, Carly... 
and and I watched it one episode. I said, why are they making these uh, teenage girls or these young girls seem like they're like Sex in the City? Like, why are they just roaming around just talking about stuff? You know what's crazy? It's just so weird. I'm not going to lie. The first time I saw Dan Schneider, I thought he was a big Mexican kid. So I didn't I didn't know that he was an adult until they gave him an award one day because I used to only see pictures of him. You know, and when they said produced by Dan Schneider, you remember around this time, this is when they were getting into child directors and they were giving them credit for things. You know, Keenan was directing things. Kale was directing things. Amanda Vines was able to direct things. So I just thought Dan Schneider was like the big girl from all that. So I just thought, but I didn't know he was 54 years old at the time already and playing with kids. Yeah, Kablam was my shit. I loved Kablam. But outside of that, I didn't really catch too much. Uh, okay, we know the Kablam. We know Rugrats. Uh, Cat and Dog was weird. Uh, it was a couple Angry Beavers. You know, those types of things. Uh, Our Real Monsters, that type of stuff. But that was... Um, that was a nice golden era of animation for Nickelodeon, which they overly killed with the success of SpongeBob. That's really what killed Nickelodeon's animation era was su the success of SpongeBob and the success of Avatar, the first one. And after that, they didn't want to take nothing else. They just kept milking that. Also, by the way, uh, yeah, my cousin Skeeter, but they said there was some issues on the set of my cousin Skeeter. So uh, again, Nickelodeon... Uh, thanks for ruining people's childhoods, you know, just to keep it real yeah, on that we, one. Yeah, <laughs> that slime stuff, that's all yeah. sexual. I didn't watch just, that shit. It, it looked look, weird. We're going to break down the disgusting behavior of Nickelodeon and oh. everything, 7 o'clock. Shouts out to AG. They say y'all still having a Patreon stream tonight or 7. No, tomorrow. it's 7 at tomorrow, uh, Friday. We're going to talk about the Nickelodeon thing on Patreon. It's yeah. Friday, everyone. Yes. Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. But now getting to our main event yes. for this particular live is uh, the Beyonce American flag and Dave Rubin said he couldn't be friends with Kendra's no more because of what she said about Israel and Zionists and all this other stuff. But he was friends. Meanwhile, he was friends with her when they were both talking anti-black, right? When when Dave Rubin said Dave Rubin black here. people need to go over slavery and it wasn't let's, as bad as the Holocaust. Let's talk about Jim the Crow Negroes. was not as bad as the Holocaust. Uh, yeah. Black towns getting bombed was not as bad as the Holocaust. It's like... Can this bitch shut the fuck up? The Holocaust happened in Germany. It did not happen in the United States. How are you going to come and immigrate your ass over to the United States and tell the people who've been here it wasn't a bud? But then we had to fight to save your uncle and aunts over there in Nazi Germany. Man, shut up. But we're going to get into yeah. that more. Which one you want to start with, let, Prince? Let me start with some excitement. Be <laughs> let me start with some excitement. So yeah. you start with it's Beyonce. It's going to take me a minute to get to Dave Rubin because it's that <laughs> damn it's that, eye for the straight it's that damn speech impediment. <laughs> and I hate that he thinks he's intelligent. Oh, with that. small because I'm Jewish. Yeah, right? you know. It's <laughs> Dave Rubin here. Uh, Sounds like a bad Jim Carrey uh, character. Yeah, yeah. it looks yeah, like an yeah, yeah. off-brand Jim Carrey. Yeah, Dave yeah. Rubin here, and then it's the way his like his his very thin monkey lips pooch out when he talks. He do got a fucking <laughs> chimpanzee lips. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the George Bush lips. Yeah, it's like a a, a semi okay smart <laughs> monkey talking to you. Hey, he do look like a monkey like, to oh, me this, when I see him. This talk. monkey knows how to smoke a cigar. Dave <laughs> 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 Rubin here. <laughs> You know, so yeah, that is true. A lot of these people are trying to part ways with people in that they are criticizing Israel and the Palestinian Gaza conflict. But a lot of these people had no problem riding around in a six tray banging on black folks. Yeah, I noticed like I can't be friends with like black people have a real sense of humor. Just real quick we could, yeah. before people talk about black people being coons and stuff. Yeah. You no, know, when black people have friendship even with other groups, we joke on their culture. And people, we have a great sense of humor. We're not sensitive people. But what I've noticed yeah. is that when you do joke on other people's cultures, they tell you it's sacred. I'm a Jew. Don't say this about me. I'm Cuban. Don't say this about me. I'm this, I'm that, right? Dave Rubin here. I, this is where I'm at. Like, if if you think it's funny to harp on my group, but then when we joke on yours, we, I'm, I'm not friends with you no more. To don't come over here at all. Don't come over here towards me at all. And if y'all notice, black people, everybody wants black Americans in the whole world to come and save them. Remember, they always say something is more dire. The Holocaust was more dire. We we went over there. We saved lives. 
Black men came over here, got kicked in the nuts, and called monkeys. Actually, you have some legendary black soldiers that got points on the board, like LeBron James when it came to their Nazi kill rate. There are some legendary black soldiers that got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar numbers when it came to killing Nazis. And then you saw the black people who supported Gaddafi. What happened when Gaddafi was removed by France and the United States, by NATO? Yeah. They lynched black people over there in Libya. So look, I, I'm tired of people saying everybody's cause is dire. And then when we run over there... Y'all come over here. Look, Vietnam was was happening to them. They were getting blown up. The kids and stuff. It was horrible. You saw uh, Ali said, "I ain't fighting over there and harming those people. They never done anything to me." And a lot of Black Americans said that only for when they come over here and immigrate over here, they start acting like that woman Kim. You know where uh, they come over here to the United States after we make these sacrifices for other groups. Then when they come to the United States, they act like they don't know nobody. All right, well, that's fine. Moving on. Moving on. That's it. Moving on. Also, too bad. Oh, my bad, you all. I thought you all were saying Dave Rubin talks like he's from Gullah Gullah Island. <laughs> you guys are just talking about you like the show. That's fair. <laughs> all right. But you know what? He do look like that frog in the mouth. He does. Dave Rubin, man, I'm telling you, that's an ugly man. Now, you know, that uh, is an ugly human he's being. He's very ugly. Now, education time. Yeah. We saw Azilia, Azilia Banks go in on Beyonce. <laughs> You mean to write her fan letter? Her fan letter. Yeah, and the, 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 Azalea is a huge fan of Beyonce. And she almost got people until people like you and I, until people like Yvette and other people corrected people and said this is Southern rodeo culture. In particular, she's from Houston, Texas. There's no issue with her using the American flag in this context. Well, it is a and, ritual that they but, use as a the flag girl when they ride around. It's, it's no different. It falls right into the realm of Southern pageantry or not even just Southern pageantry, but you'll see it in the Midwest. You may have some aspects in certain parts of New York, like upstate New York. Uh, uh, to the point where, you know, even with B-more and I was talking the other day, but sitting there, you know, we, we drove all around New York and there's New York City, which is a pin needle in the state of New York. Most of New York is rural. There's a lot of, there's a lot of country farming that goes on in New York that the five boroughs kind of just like, eh, right? So across this nation, there are different iterations of the rodeo because cowboys and cowgirls, uh, specifically pioneered by black people, uh, have always existed. And you saw Azalea herself had the American flag when she was doing her little uh, dance yeah. music rodeo session. So she's being a very hypocritical Maybe chica, she don't remember. Chica right now. And then also just to add to that, where's your tea on Elon Musk? Elon Musk is coming out here dissing black people, lying on black people, talking about black pilots, low IQ, when that black pilots have nothing to do with the Boeing crashes. And she's quiet on that. And she didn't call out by name the country elites who have been gatekeeping country music from black people when we are an origin source of country music. So yeah. these things need to be talked about. Look, we talk about black individuals here on Thought Crimes <clears throat> platform when they're wrong. When right. Jay-Z is wrong yeah. with the uh, stadium. Uh, Fuck out of here, Sam. He helped built on poor black people's heads in yeah. New York. Nigga, I'm never wrong. <laughs> we criticize them. And y'all know we talked about Puff Steam. <laughs> But sometimes you have some black people who just have battery in their back to attack other black people, but they don't have that same bravado as everyday black people have. Like, don't get it twisted. Everyday black people smack the shit out of someone who calls them the N-word. They'll get their, their skull bashed in. They try to step to them. This is why a lot of white people on Elon's uh, Stormfront website uh, be crying all day because 80% of the videos are, are black people kicking You mean right it don't go like it does in the movies where no. the black guy or the black woman get killed at the beginning? No, the most of the oh. time. Or like that iced tea dude who who smacked that kid of iced tea into that white boy's face. Most of the time, white boys and white girls who are racist be getting fucked up most of the time. And this is why you see racist white people crying about that. But, well, but just to get to... Yeah, let's get to this here. To industry people because yeah. uh, there's a difference between industry blacks and everyday blacks industry blacks and blacks in politics always want to ham hawk their way somewhere for the money they'll sell out black people for the money they don't get along with each other they undercut each other for the money and they'll harm even the black community 
for the money. Whereas everyday black people, as y'all seen in many videos, we defend ourselves from racists. Well, I'll say this. Um, I don't, uh, you know, see you make up some great points. And I, I'm just going to speak very clearly about this. I normally don't really care. I, and I still don't care, you know, about the, the whole thing concerning Azalea Banks. I am, you know, I would, I actually more interested in her going off about Elon Musk. Um, I would like to see what does she have to say about Diddy. But I, again, what am I what am I supposed to expect from Elzelia Bank? The girl don't re she didn't even release music on time when I was interested, right? And then she was like, anybody, any man that listens to my shit is a faggot. I started laughing. I said, all right, whatever, nigga. Okay, right? Sure. Moving on forward, I right? Mean, so, not the fact that black people collectively, period, just created house, house music. music. That's all I was listening including to. Including heterosexual black yeah, men. Yeah, I just not thought, them, nigga, I thought you could rhyme on beat. Right, not every black <laughs> man damn. in house music was gay. Yeah, damn. So that's why I say, you know, I, I that's where I can see a lot of the skewing. And even when she made that statement about heterosexual men listening to house music, music and denoting the fact that heterosexual men and women pioneered house music along with the lgbtq community black culture better yet you know i just said whatever now upon remembering that from azalea banks because i thought the girl when she did what she did that 93 was it the 94 freestyle shit oh, all her house music yeah man all dope. that shit was Even fire when she did razor uh i i thought yeah. that was nice that too. razor track was hard as fuck and man. usually when she's had criticized certain people in the industry she's been uh spot on it's just that sometimes she don't take her l theanine yeah <laughs> sometimes no sometimes she just don't take her fucking l theanine she was just inaccurate about the beyonce things that she's talking about for this particular issue so and also I feel like we need to talk about black people just like we talk about everybody with nuance. You see how people talk about Johnny Depp or whoever I and don't. they're very nuanced I'm not. with these white people. You're right, but, yeah, I'm but not. they don't want us to be look, I'm Beyonce tell you until she get caught on some Dan Schneider shit, she should be critiqued of good and bad. Well she has not been caught messing around right. like some of these other people that we had to smoke a pack on because what Puffstein did was too far to give him any grace so to your point you know let's be able to dissect this uh, uh uh conversation this information pertaining to this whole rodeo oh yeah no you're not you're not wrong about that the only reason why i'm bringing this up because when she made that statement about house music i said eh, i don't know what the hell she's talking about and then uh, when she said this about well okay two things here the reason why uh as you can see uh yvette carnell she uh, retweeted a post uh, where it says here Azalea Banks is from New York and I remember one uh, one New York nigga he was like yo leave New York out of this I said nope she's speaking as a New Yorker all right and I'm talking about specifically Harlem New York Prince we're not style. talking about we're not getting well, on all New wait, Yorkers wait, wait, for wait. Azalea See, excuse me <laughs> let me I'm gonna finish what I'm saying here now let me tell you what this this ain't getting on all New Yorkers but I'm talking about from her perspective how she's speaking there's these uh it's a hawkish talking point that she's coming from, basically from up north. Her this, big ass right? head was the only one who brought it up, though. Ain't you nobody know, in New York was caring about sin, Beyonce on. Rodeo Shine. But again, the average New Yorker be like, I speak for all New York niggas. No, stop I, it, Press. You be a, a, a regionist. No, I'm not. And New Yorkers sin, are the number feel. one sin. city that supports sin. star crime. I know that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. But I'm just speaking on this situation here. The reason why I say this, Azalea Banks is a city girl. She's from, she is from Harlem. She's Harlem all the way through and through. Like, even when she described Megan Thee Stallion, she said, well, you know, she's kind of ham hawkish. No, that, wait. All right. So, okay, wait, that wait, part, I, I said, wait a minute wait, now. Was, okay. I was going to say that minute. part, I agree with you, you know, I don't need that coastal. East Coast is New, New York. Sometimes we talk about Southerners, those, those sidewalks, okay. ham hock, cornbread. It's either. the same shit here. But with this love letter to Beyonce. They didn't jump on this Beyonce. Wait, it was just her. It was a love letter to Beyonce, but oh, my God. <laughs> Boy, I said, girl, come on now, right? So she said, she talked about the pick me flag and she just, <laughs> you being a coon, you a mammy on a horse, you black ass bitch, you, it was all of this shit. I said, what the fuck is this woman talking about? 
But that but, would be like I'm gonna be honest but with Isaiah you. Isaiah don't have an issue with Puerto Ricans with their Puerto Rican and flag. And again, Southern <laughs> niggas, we don't know nothing when Dominicans start telling people they not black, and then Puerto Ricans say we black, and then y'all say yo everybody can say nigga. Well, okay. we don't. We don't. Again, the South. <laughs> We don't get involved with that. Wait. We don't bring that to our doorstep. I will doorstep. give you this, Prince. All right. She's going to get cooked because as a person from the East yeah. Coast, All right. I see a lot of world flags over in New York. Okay. Puerto Rican flags. NATO niggas. Dominican flags. NATO niggas. And these flags also had colonialism. NATO Remember, niggas. The Spaniards colonized a lot of parts in South America and the Caribbean. So... You know, it's very hypocritical to say yeah. me no American flag. And this is to, uh, not to my Puerto Rican, because y'all didn't come out and say anything against Beyonce, but to Azalea Banks in particular, who lives in New York. How are you going to say but she got to take hers down, but everybody else keep their so up? This is what I'm speaking to. No, it is a Southern East Coast thing when Azalea speaks. Because again, Azalea, this is her second time misjudging the South. And I did say this before. When Southern music, right, when Southern music took its wave in the mid 2000s, we had a lot of specifically boule intellectual elites that happened to be from New York, that don't represent New York, all of New York, that happened to be from New York. They started overly niggifying the South with their dissertations. So, I'll give you an example. When Soldier Boy first came out, I swear, when blogs were a thing, nawright.com, Smoking Session, when all of these places were a thing I used to visit, the first group of people that I seen call Soldier Boy a little baby Sambo Coon Black Lip Nigga Jr. were a lot of the Torrey niggas from quote unquote upstate or upper manhattan new york that were writing their dissertations now it mind wasn't you just new york it was west coast too snoop well, dogg came out and called uh we I, know they called him a bitch west but everybody knows that snoop dogg's a drug addict so we didn't believe him he like i like tupac i hate tupac so we didn't believe him at least we know where the uncle drug addict stands man he don't stand on nothing <laughs> but, and I remember Ice T, who's from both coasts, actually he's originally from New Jersey, but he lived in Cali for a very long time, and he also called out Soldier Boy, called him. And a bitch it was too. it was good to back him down in the paint because your whole music is based on sex trafficking. <laughs> Shut up, nigga, and you play a cop. <laughs> Set your ass down. But where I became infuriated because growing up. New York is a mecca of hip hop. It sets a standard. You know, when you read some of the books that come out of New York about when they when they critique the South, you know, when Michael Larrick Dyson wrote his intelligent book on Nas, Five Mics, and he talked about Illmatic, and he talked about Holif, you hear me? Like, you take those things into account with authority in the literal sense. That's a spot of hip hop that's missing right now is the literalist. You, you, you don't have uh, the, 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 um, the literature of hip hop is just completely gone. On right now but you know the 2000s was the last era of the hip-hop uh literate individuals that was just making books writing blogs so when i used to read you know articles written by torrey and uh some of these other people old bitch ass elliot wilson another nigga right but they were always you know doing subs and like how like some of the southern culture is just a bunch of sambos running around you know and i said well wait a minute now hold on What's the difference between Soldier Boy and Kwame and the Polka Dots? Yeah, but still, right? why do you, so, you don't cook on. the West Coast like that when they've been calling? The, they call sometimes get on y'all in the South too. Who when? I just gave you the example Who? of the Soldier Boy era when Snoop and a lot of West Coast niggas was coming First after all, after a uh, Soldier Boy's that, that, day. Let me tell you something. The reason why that's rare because the Crips and Bloods are killing each other over there. <laughs> they busy trying to stop uh, uh, gang violence. <laughs> They busy getting exploited by WAC 100. That's why, like, nobody. And Big U and, other and Big U. That's why and no, Mexicans. I give a fuck about when the West Coast criticize anybody. I love them. You I fuck, love, yeah, you I fuck, fuck with. I fuck with them, but you know, like, realistically, I don't. I've never really heard too much. And again. Ice T did that because he's an East Coaster originally. Well, we know he's from. So he gonna Jersey, be judgment. Yes. Yeah, he gonna be judgmental out the gate. But what's the Snoop excuse? Snoop, what are you talking about? Well, here's a excuse. Okay, we know Snoop I was see high, babe. That nigga's <laughs> shit was laced with cocaine. 
That, that, that nigga shit was like when he's <laughs> come on man. Like, so you feel mm -hmm. New York is the biggest corporate out of all of the West and East Coast. It's certain type of it's certain type of itself. energies from New York. It's certain types in it. I'm I'm going to be very specific. It's not even like the ashy knuckled nigga on the corner. I've talked to them. They don't give up. They gonna listen to UGK. They gonna listen to uh, uh, Cool G rap. You know, a lot of niggas in New York. I think. Come on, if they listen to uh, Fruity Loopy Doopy Poopy Poopy raps from Cameron, they'll listen to anybody. So it's not that. It's the ones that prognosticate themselves as the scholarly hip hop class of the East Coast. And it's really like the nigga nerds in the high castles okay. that don't mess with anybody. Uh, but Azalea Banks is not a nigga nerd. She's she's. Did a, you see all that nigga nerd shit she wrote? She's a crazy. Azalea Banks. She ain't a nigga nerd though. She's a killmonger nerd. She, she's a killmongress. Yes. But she, I wouldn't say she a nigga Man, nerd though. Did you see that dissertation she wrote? Be more, nobody can write be that more, How many pages was that shit? You know that, that shit was seven. It was you like know five crazy pages. Crazy people write that long. You this see, you was see, five cuckoo pages. birds write in response to us with ten paragraphs. And I don't they, read it when they off their mad. And I won't read it. <laughs> I won't. No, you don't. In the name of Jesus, this is not. I'm, this is not Aaron Magruder. I'm not reading that. You know. So here's my thing about it with Azalea Banks. This is why we have to be careful about our own culture specifically. Now, the part that I actually agree with her 100% on, which she faced herself, is when black artists participate with obviously almost crime syndicated like record labels and they have predatory racial practices against the black artist when they get another black artist to oust another black artist for whatever reason. I agree with her there. But... When she was up there and she mammified Beyonce, I said, girl, what are you talking about? But she was the only one, though. She the loudest one. She was the only one. We're you not going to sit, sit stop it. We're talking about Azalea. We're not talking about Beyonce versus New York. Azalea said something. That's what I'm saying. Well, let it me stay her. on that. But don't keep saying she the only no, one. No, because at the Get beginning, out the way, sin. you try to have bullshit Get out the New way, York sin. You was trying to come from Get out too. the way, sin. All right, go back to New Jersey. <laughs> Get out the way. Because the reason why I'm saying this is because there's a narrative of shame that typically happens and you wonder why then you can't celebrate your muddy waters. You can't celebrate your John Lee hookers. You know, you don't have your Rosetta Tharps because they don't fit a scholarly, sophisticated, upper bougie class of niggas that are out of touch with the rest of black America. Some of the talking points that she was writing in that long dissertation was bougie, boule, elitist talking points. Are you trying to say even broke black people from New York try to be bougie? <laughs> My lawyer, a Jew. <laughs> My accountant, a Jew. <laughs> Did you go <gonna> chew? <laughs> I'm just saying. You don't hear niggas in this up. Man, my lawyer, Mexican. The Mexican is going to test you, man. You don't hear that. So that's all I'm saying. And, you know, I, I feel like this. Black Americans, you all's mothers and fathers and uncles and aunties and cousins and sisters and brothers and yourselves. And we got plenty of veterans that listen to thought crimes. They always reach out to us. You all have contributed way too much to this country for people to tell you that what Beyonce or anybody else, even Patriots, yeah, I've heard some dusty black folks who are insecure about their placement in the world get on black veterans about their um, supporting their services they participated with the flags. And again, black veterans, black veterans historically have been some of the most vocals, uh, vocal against the United States government. Many of them, when they returned from war, they joined the Black Panthers. Many of them, when they returned from war, they did start up chapters in their community to set things up. Black people can walk and chew gum. We, Thank you, we, Sam. We have... Def look, first of all, we defended all you niggas from around the world. Thank you. We've defended all of you from around the world while still also repping 
the positive aspects of the American flag. And also, people forget, someone said in the chat, which they write, Dipset always had American flag uh, outfits. Come on now. Always. So, but that's all I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just being like this. Look, I feel like this. I'm not going to get into the situation where people clown black people for every damn thing. Because, again, when black people say, hey, you know what? I'm proud my ancestors do arrive from Africa, West Africa, right? People get on them about that. You know, oh, what you talking about? You back to Africa, ass nigga. Okay, then a black person says, you know what? Uh, you know, I got the American flag. You know, my uncle served uh, in the Navy or my 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 uncle went to Vietnam or my uncle went to the Gulf War. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This whole sellout coon ass patriot nigga. And that, that's not even a talking point. What I'm saying is allow black expression to be, you know, um, Sin shared a clip with me. Uh, with Godfrey on Shannon Sharp and uh, Godfrey did a couple things. I just like I disagreed with. First of all, Godfrey got on Shannon Sharp and say black people ain't shit. Black Americans. He said black Americans ain't shit. When Nigerians were getting roasted, because I believe he's Nigerian descent. He is. He said, leave my Nigerian community alone while he sat on Vlad, the Impaler's couch, and told the black Americans who had a problem with Vlad, he told them they should kiss his ass, and he made fun of black Americans. When Nigerians make mistakes, he, he doesn't say Nigerians ain't shit. I did not like that. I thought that was very disingenuous and very crappy. And y'all Hollywood niggas got to stop comparing yourselves to everyday black people. Right. We don't get into the Hollywood door because we're not sellouts. And right. we actually want to build our community, which is why mm -hmm. they try to stifle us to get money. Yeah. Many of you who get rich in Hollywood, they know you ain't going to do shit. <laughs> so, I mean, like, yeah, and, they know and they know you're going to undercut each other. Y'all gossiping about each other. Uh, uh, we knew years ago Puffstein was going to take a L. Uh, uh, you got Hollywood niggas uh, 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 ratting to us talking about uh, uh, they about to do a, a Hunger Games with uh, uh, black Negroes in this industry. That's y'all. Don't put yeah. that on us. Also, shout out to Emery Willis says, uh, good afternoon, TC. You guys are all over the place today. Multiple time slots. Glad to catch you all stream. And if you guys understand what Emery, sorry about that, Emery, just to let you all know. Uh, with the original stream, we had some technical issues, so we want to make sure it's perfect because we're going to give you all the best layout when it comes to calling the fight between J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. Shouts out to Night Night. Uh, he kept hammering at us for like three weeks, you know, and he said, man, they about to fight. I said, all right, we, we you know, he's like, whatever. But, you know, he told us to check out the channel, What's the Dirt? We sat there. I listened to what What's the Dirt did. The brother, the guy, he did a brilliant job of piecing together the subliminals. And I will tell you, that clearly is a little bit of an issue there. J. Cole and K. Dot clearly got static with each other. All right. Monday, we will be talking about it Monday at 9 a.m. in the yes. morning. We're yes. going to be talking about Monday. it. Monday. And also, don't forget, tomorrow, yes, Friday tomorrow. at 7 o'clock p.m., we will be breaking down Nickelodeon esoterically yes. and the whole situation over there. But getting back to this, no, he did say black black people. He said it. He yeah. said black people. Then he tried to clean up a little bit later and said black comedians, maybe. He said, maybe I should be fair and just say black comedians. But no, he said, you black, he said black people. That, 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 shouldn't, that, shouldn't have came, that shouldn't have came out of your muscle face mouth in the first place, Godfrey. Like, I mean, it's like... That's the shit I'm talking about. You know? Like, I, my only thing is this. This is what sometimes I, I have a I, I have a issue with the black entertainer class. But my issue is not, it's irrelevant because I'm not in that space and I don't really care like that. But I'm just, I'm just telling you all as a specter. All right? From Kingdom Come. Right? Illustrated by Alex Ross. One of the greatest graphic novels of all time. As a specter. You know... I hate when they cry about Jews in the ADL or the Italian Defense League getting on everybody's ass early on in Hollywood about misrepresenting them, right? But then you have these same people, such as Godfrey, who had these complaints about the Jews, the Italians, then gets on a platform with a black man, very successful, that had his door open to all types of black entertainers and athletes where they get a chance to talk, right? 
probably the only thing in podcast space with the attention that could counter that of Joe Rogan. And one of the first things you do when you get up there is say, black people ain't shit. Right. And then he starts up the conversation, <laughs> man, I hate when Hollywood, when we talk about each other. So anyway, black, black people ain't shit. <laughs> like, you going to get your whole point. Your whole point was like, you know, people in the industry, they're black. They used to should be more united. And then he united. And then he lied and said that white comedians are together. I, we look at YouTube all the time. White comedians hate uh, uh, Joe Rogan's crew. They're making videos on them all the time. Now, when you talk about um, them doing hate love with each other, which, you know, even though they hate on each other, some of them still make money with each other. Fine. Okay. But but that's on you Hollywood niggas issues. That's not a black American issue. Like we said, most of y'all do a lot of different things to get through that gate that most of us will not do to get there. As you said with the um, little JJ from Nickelodeon, he said, I ain't giving up no butt. Yeah. So the Jordan show is over. Yeah, it's so over. So there you go. Send it up. Send it up. Send it up, nigga. It's over. Oh, that's what y'all want me to do? Send it up. Also, uh, Mystic Dime is getting on you, Prince, and saying... And Zoya Banks is the GOAT, period. What's his name? Missing Dimes? <laughs> all right. R.L. Laverne says, did you all watch the interview? Yes, yes. Actually, I haven't finished all of it, uh, but I've seen that part. In, uh, no, what, he, what was released in the four-minute clip? Remember, that wasn't a 30-second soundbite. That's not a soundbite. That is a four- to five-minute clip. And everything that he stated in the clip is pretty much also when you listen to further into the interview, he doesn't necessarily revisit that. Now, other than that, I don't really care about it. I think Godfrey's a, a pretty funny guy. I think he's definitely one of the better ones, better conversationalist uh, comedians in the game. You know, I actually enjoy his conversations more than his stand-up. Um, but outside of that, I do feel like, again... <sighs> I think we've already allowed enough black American entertainers to have an issue with themselves and black people to breathe and disrespect black people publicly. I I, I feel we've like we we we've we've already let you know the Tommy Sotomayor's breathe. You get what I'm saying? We've already let uh, a lot of these. Uh, rappers that get on you know a lot of these multi-billion dollar platforms and they talk bad about black americans you know we've already allowed you know uh old comedians to uh did you know denigrate a particular uh economic black class uh of black america publicly in front of individuals that were not black i think we've already allowed enough black hate and black insecurity to breathe you know this is why i said for this particular situation with even the whole flag notion because i see people online or they're, they're, they're stalking people that um you know have the american flag somewhere you know and i, I feel like that's a black identity expression that uh cracker clansman told quote unquote the nigger that you're not you're not an american nigger we don't rock yeah. with the confederate flag because <laughs> that was just a hundred percent one direction of just hate and yes. of trying to dominate black people and that was it but with Fazilia, look she just misfired on this one and and it's so, okay beyonce <laughs> is not perfect where she can't be criticized if you want to talk about thievery if y'all want to talk about other things but you got when y'all take a shot you got to make sure the shot is accurate Azalea was not accurate this time. It seemed like she was just being petty. Like when she was talking about Daddy Warbucks, Jay-Z, everybody rocked with her. We agreed with her even on here. When the writers were talking about Beyonce, give writers credit. We agreed with her. Uh, that, you know, people, these big time artists need to give credit to writers that write for them or collaborate with them. But this one was not a good one. This one was a, a, a very bad misfire. And Yvette and other people brought up great points. Yeah. When she was doing Afro beats and all this other stuff. Nobody everybody, said nothing. And when she wearing the br Brazilian flag. Nobody said nothing. Like, like, yeah, so it's like, why? Like, stop it. It's like, I feel like Azalea Banks just wanted something to say. And that was it. And she chose just the wrong moment to do it. I feel like she's excited about the project. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I, yeah, I, I feel that Zelia Banks is a huge Beyonce fan. I think she's very excited about this project. She cannot... Azalea Banks will be one of the first people I will look for her review when the album drops. I know we're going to get 12 pages. 
and I can't wait. I'm going to read every line of it. But I will say is this. Be careful. Be careful. Because don't you sit your ass up last year and ate all them damn chili dogs and hot dogs and hamburgers last 4th of July and you playing new on the internet now with black people and the American flag. A lot of niggas, I have seen this firsthand. Niggas will say, oh yeah, you are cool. You got that big flag, man. Yeah, you fucking cool. Fourth of July. They going to every fireworks show. <laughs> they going to every cookout. <laughs> yeah, they- I see. I see niggas talking about, and hey, don't do the American flag. And it is that, did they eat hot dogs on Fourth of July? They are at the cookout. They're grilling. Like, come, come on, on now. Stop it. Stop it, sir. On your way to that low sale. Yeah. Stop it on your way to that Home Depot but sale. If, if people who don't know why Azalea Banks need to be criticized, go live in New York for a week. <laughs> go live in New York City for a week where you see everybody around the world flag there. You got Indian people Ooh. from India got their flag showing. I ain't never seen nothing like you it. You got the uh, Israel flag. You got everything. She ain't complaining about everybody it, 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 even outside of New York waving the Is- Israeli flag. Like, I saw. So- like, come on. Like, I saw. <laughs> Let me tell you, I saw in New York one time. It is the diver- it is the most diverse city in the nation. I saw when I was riding around one time, doing uh, taking care of some things. I saw a Palestinian flag next to the neighbor who had an Israeli flag across the street from a Mexican flag. Don't nobody say nothing. See, that's what I said. How indoctrinated, even this so-called sophisticated black boule bougie headed elitists okay i have to say the bougie headed elitists they cannot even see how much inoculation of what you call white supremacist talking points even when they're intellectually writing their shit out they don't know they're just being an elite white supremacist dipped in chaka because let me give you an example they told black american soldiers that put up them points on the board when they was over there smoking on the Nazi pack. Boom, boom, boom. They got some brothers, it's just straight out of an Action Jackson shit. I used to read about these stories growing up as a kid. This shit sounded crazy, right? I was like, man, niggas that, they, they look like us and they over there, they was clipping them Nazis over there. I can't wait for somebody to do a real movie on the shit too, right? <laughs> but then they come back and racist white men who was too bitch to go to Germany to fight, will tell those black soldiers, nigga, you're not an American. Even white soldiers, they were being more nice to Nazi German soldier, uh, soldiers than they were to uh, uh, black American soldiers. It was it was very, 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 very disgusting. What, you want to say something? Also, there have been known shootouts during World War II amongst the white and black soldiers. Yes. So they used to actually just go like, well, bitch, we just going to fight then. And they started Send it just up. shooting at each other behind the lines because what you not about to do is start coming at me and you letting these nazis run behind your back so they just started shooting they, they literally had a whole shootout with the black and white soldiers mm. yeah, people trying to call us uh spoiled and they know what the fight is it's not about attention we know black people are flying we can get attention so people try to talk to us like y'all get attention y'all spoiled no we're not when you look at own businesses, businesses that are owned by different ethnic groups, yes. black people, 3%. How the fuck does a group of people that was here during the space age and also made contributions to NASA, even landing on the moon when you have black women being mathematicians and also George Carruthers with his uh, t- telescope and other technology he has up out there in, in, in space and all these people, right? And we made... <laughs> We revolutionized telecommunications, the railroads, all this stuff, right? And you're saying groups who came here later own a higher percentages of businesses than us? Look, stop playing these games with us. Stop trying to gaslight us because that is what happened. And also to this point of the conversation, it's not about Zillia Banks. She doesn't do that. We're just brought in the conversation about um, uh, uh, just other people saying things about the American flag and all this other stuff. But just to just to go back to it, you go to New York. There's a lot of people flags everywhere, you know. And and uh, I do think people need to be careful. Now, to Emery's point, yes, Virgos can be passive aggressive. I'm not saying that there's zero possibility that um, 
Beyonce could be being petty, but from what it seemed like, it seemed like she's being petty more with the country music establishment than with any particular black artist for this particular thing. Yeah, you know, you know, the only thing I'll just say about that too, um, because you you have, and I, I will say, look, I'm gonna be real with you all. I have seen some of the folks that are quote unquote super pro black, and they're not originally from America. Shouts out to our immigrants. But I have seen people kind of hold on to a stereotypical view of what they think a pro-black black American is. So you calling a black person that has the American flag in their hand or they have it on their lapel, they have it on their door somewhere, you calling them a coon is disingenuous to the group of African-Americans uh, that started Memorial Day. You know, how do you like that's what I'm saying? Like, how do we put into proper context about black people's contribution to this country? You know, and there have been the people have been so used to the disfigurement of black identity in America. They're comfortable seeing black people wear everything else. A Brazilian flag. Right. Uh, a, a, a Ghana flag. I don't have a problem with this. Uh, a Russian flag. Some people are like, yeah, you know, there were black Russians. There'll be some niggas. There were black Russians, right? But then the minute the nigga be like, yo, let me put this American flag on my desk. Oh, man, you a coon. You a coon ass nigga. And you asked him about the contributions of black people in building this country. It's one thing if you talk about some people ice capaying around on a landmass that they had no affiliation or contribution to. Ladies and gentlemen, most of your well-functioning everyday inventions come from black americans most of your genetically engineered or scientifically innovative endeavors come from black inventors so my issue initially just at the top with the conversation uh, with you know what was the initial reaction when they saw beyonce with the flag black beyonce ain't being petty holding that fucking flag she's from goddamn houston texas it's fucking it's a it's one of the largest black rodeos in the nation what the fuck is she being petty about when it comes to that because it would have been if it would have been another singer they would have had the same reaction so my thing is this no no people were saying beyonce has a history of being petty oh, we yeah, were saying no. like when uh uh the Khalees thing for example uh, you know what y'all keep which i'm that, saying that, that that's the for I those get what other you said. times yes but for this I think it's towards the country music establishment. Here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about it. My issue is that the conversation with Beyonce and that flag wasn't about her specifically. I saw people with a narrative. I and I know where you come from saying that you know we agree on that. But the narrative became about black people embracing the American flag. And people was calling her uh, uh, they a were colonialist. Call yeah, and they, they <laughs> was. I said, "Well, did you write that shit from America, nigga? Or where are you at? Are you in Zimbabwe writing this shit?" So again, yes, there have been issues with colonialization. That is that, but that's with every imperial empire that's with the brits that's with america that's with russia that's with fucking china right now that is what globalists do in general but what i don't like in this situation people have been even black some black folks online are so comfortable with black people not celebrating their identities well even in a broader spectrum you have people politically just of all races rooting for russia you know, and, you know, Russia has their policies and their culture, like on yeah. homosexuality, for example. But then those same people will come and criticize uh, Beyonce for um, the American flag. It's like you can't be a hypocrite to the atrocities of a lot of different cultures from around the world. Because when you only like, mm -hmm. for example, someone could say um, wearing the flag of uh Argentina is disrespectful to the black people who were ex who were exterminated in Argentina, you know. But you go to Florida, people have the Argentinian flag out, ain't nobody tripping. Say that again. You said ain't nobody tripping. Ain't son. nobody tripping. Ain't nobody yeah, tripping. Ain't nobody tripping. You could even talk about uh, the whole Cuban thing in Florida, how light skinned Cubans or Cubans that have more of a European background are praised and supported over 
uh cubans with african features and and that comes from uh, a higher percentage of an african background you know and how they have to like quietly do their own thing in the dark when they're talking about like certain spiritual beliefs and different things like that and i you know you know some cubans may get mad but i i've, I've been in florida i've been around a lot of cuban people i know that there's some of y'all who are um and not all of you though of course some of y'all are proud about your uh, you know your your mixed background but some of you are ashamed of it you know and you can even see that you don't see like um different black groups in florida like just getting along you don't see like oh cubans and haitians all the caribbean different caribbean people uh backing each other up no when ronald reagan made a policy he only said only cubans can swim over here and they can become american citizens he did not give that for the haitians or he, dominicans or you know other people of the caribbean so as much as people want to say we're all one when one get something policy wise for themselves they never want to share it black americans are the only ones even sometimes to our detriment so cuban americans got that great policy from ronald reagan they were able to set up shop and do very well in florida they didn't say oh man uh, ronald reagan you should open it up for for other uh, uh caribbeans uh who are facing hell in their in their homeland no so there's a lot of bias and a lot of cherry picking that goes on no you're not wrong about that and um that's all i i wanted to see because first of all um if you if you ever had a chance to experience you know going to a rodeo specifically a black rodeo uh it's i i think you know I always i always encourage people definitely if you get a chance go to a black rodeo take your babies it's a safe environment you'll have fun and a lot of times you get a chance to just you know hear some history that you may be unaware of you know um but you know, the sending that we talk about is like one of the reasons why we kind of did thought crimes because you know it's it's just about positive social engineering in the sense of like you know spinning the spin zone shit that they put out there against us. You know, I'm not one of these people. Uh, like I've seen some people online, they're pointless anarchists. They they don't have a solution. So you have people online uh, that was calling. Uh, you know, not only Beyonce, but some people, and I did see some of the folks I knew that they, they seem to be veterans or they were veterans, excuse me, uh, getting called uh, a coon. And then you go to this person's page, you know, they're just a simple, you know, small TikToker, YouTuber. You, you know, if you ask them like, you know what? Now, we don't even say like, you got to sacrifice for your country, but like even in your, in any of the communities or neighborhoods, have you, what efforts have you put forth then? You know, I know when I was 14, 15, 16, you know, I was doing like little, little. I mean, I, of course, somebody would say, but boy, you was a little brother. But I was doing big brother programs, helping, you know, other little black boys in the neighborhood and, you know, showing them how to do their fucking algebra and kept doing this shit all the way up until like 18, 19 and 20 until I had to, you know, go do college and things like that. But some of these people that are trying to dictate black America's experience and their identity, you ask them in their own neighborhoods, what have you done? What have you put forth? What what offers have you put out there? Who have you helped? What old sick black woman have you, you know, brought her her meals on wheels, you know, every Friday or spent time with folks in a nursing home? You know, so this is what I'm saying, like, there is a, a spirit of toxic destruction because there, there's some shit that needs to be destroyed. But then there's this thing of just destroying everything, every form of identity possibly for black folks to build infrastructure. Okay, you don't want to mess with ADOS. All right, you don't want to talk about Africa. You don't want to talk about buying land. You don't want to talk about investments in stock or crypto portfolio. You don't want to talk about getting certified. You don't want to celebrate black artists. You don't want to, you know, you have these people that they're just couch potato hustlers. Well, yeah, you know? and, and look, it, it to me it's like it's quite simple you supposed to make deals for your community not just for you that is the problem when they pop prop up obama michelle obama uh any of these black people even the, the fat neck nigga from uh uh north carolina trying to be governor but saying that black people should play uh 
should pay for reparations. Why everybody who's vying for power got to be a coon? Right. Stop being a bitch. Stop being a coon in Hollywood and in politics. Now, when it comes to making deals, I agree with you. I'm so sick of people trying to say black people shouldn't make deals. You try to you black people allow all these different groups to gaslight us, mm -hmm. but then the deal we don't take. They up there taking the deal on some Jay Z shit, like when Jay Z told yeah. she when he told Jermaine Dupri not to take that NFL. I mean that uh yeah that NFL uh, deal. uh that, deal the same deal and then he went and took the same deal right. So you got to stop letting people gaslight you. You're not no coon. Like, if you go talk to Trump or Biden, because I'm sick of this shit. Hey, he talked to Biden, you're a coon. He talked to Trump, you're a coon. If you are going in to make a deal for your community, no matter what president or political figure it is, no matter if it's Republican or Democrat, and you're not a selfish coon, you're doing it on the behalf of your community. I'm real resources for your community that is perfectly fine because if you allow liberals or conservatives to gaslight you you're not going to get anything the real problem that we've had besides racism is not people talking to power brokers or holders is really one letting other groups gaslight us so they could take our shit and then this even though they johnny come lately and then the second issue is the people that we have represent us are coons whether you like Yvette or not, or any of these, or even, um, what's the one who was, uh, who, uh, I'm forgetting his name right now, but if they're coming in for community and it's not just about them, they're like, yeah, we need reparations for the community. That's a good thing. If Yvette gets invited to talk to Biden or Trump or whoever, a governor, Republican or, or, uh, democrat and they want to talk about reparations that's a good thing again the issue is not having black people talk to these parties the problem is at, uh, for a very long time we've only had coons we haven't had a booker t washington in a very long time you want to know why tesla oklahoma was a uh, 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 tesla oklahoma was created so quickly booker t washington came and made a deal for black americans hey we don't step on your toes. Y'all financially leave us alone. We're going to have our own black towns. And that's why y'all saw all those prosperous black towns. But what you have now is a bunch of money whores who most of you shouldn't trust. And I get why you don't trust them, even if they speak a good game for a moment. Y'all don't trust them because their resume says sell out, a million dollars sell out. $2 million sellout. And it's not just in politics, but it's also in Hollywood. That's why black people are fed up too many sellouts that's really what it is and so that's why i said you know just in the veneer of the conversation of what azalea banks initially said about beyonce and here come all of these blm less negroes because you know it's been exposed for what it is and what it was they have nothing else to attach on to so now what they're going to do is henpeck the rest of the black Americans online. Anytime a black American shows some sort of tenacity, movement or progress somewhere, they're going to be there to overly criticize. You guys got to keep in mind some people's jobs, some people's jobs. They have been assigned in the past life, in this life, in the afterlife is to genuinely just be haters. It comes across as hating. So when you see progress being made somewhere, and you got to remember, a lot of these political institutions in, in these two political parties amongst this duopoly, at any point in time, they can always activate the black hater to negate black progress. You have people, they will bite up your movement. They will bite up your talking point. Look at Tiffany Cross when she got up there. When black millennial men were online, I'm just using black millennial men as not to negate black millennial women. They, they, they do their thing as well. I'm just making a point here to show you something. I've been in a lot of spaces online. and There's brothers I talk to on the phone and in real life that they're having conversations of where they want to vote. Why would they consider Biden? Why did they want to consider Trump? Every black guy that I talk to, they was disgusted by Trump and his atrocious cultural behavior. 
but they were talking about his policies how certain things could allow for their business to breathe versus what they were looking for in biden or couldn't get out of biden ironically a famous black name a uh, black man by the name of o'shea jackson you know him as ice cube came forward and said uh same talking points right then you have people what they'll do is find somebody that's taking a paycheck like tiffany cross and she said black men shut up and get behind us and the reason why this is confusing language because she would be the same one to try to have a 15 minute celebrity kiss ass dissertation of why black men like lebron james shouldn't shut up and dribble but all the broke black niggas got to pass away though that is what we're talking about to the point that sin brought up about these sellouts these sellouts will position themselves in front of the black masses only to try to be lower tier taskmasters. Right. So, I'm glad you said that because let's yeah. keep it a hundred. The true people who be shitting on Biden, a lot of shit they be saying is right. People who be shitting on, on Trump, a lot of this shit they be saying be right. You know, people crying about his asses being seized, but... You know, Trump and a lot of these other white boys played this game of seizing a lot of, of black people real estate and nobody helped us. No one's helping the black farmers right now. Yes. But here's the thing. This is why I don't get into the whole, oh, you're, you're a coon if you vote for Biden. Oh, you're a coon if you vote for Trump. Yeah. You're a coon if you go into that political field and you only get whore money for you. And instead of getting actual building money, for your community because whore money is like oh i'm gonna sell out my community i'm gonna get a check it's kind of like when uh dr scott told us he told a lot of his people man let's go let's go to trump let's go try to get initiatives for our community they were sitting up there talking about i'm a poor black man up in, in trump's face or even like how people be be um with that energy even with biden you know it's it's disgusting have a backbone and actually fight for your community you shouldn't even be involved in politics if it's not a community effort that's on your mind. Yeah, and that's all I, I just want to highlight. And that's that's the only thing, y'all. I, I most of the time I, I'm entertained by Azalea Banks, but you know, with this one, it's just because where everybody else took the conversation with Azalea Banks, you know, and then they begin to chastise black americans and black americans that actually your middle class black american and your upper middle class black american um is always going to have say in politics people that have something to lose people that are coming from uh functional poverty status in america that are black and uh what you call african-american whatever terms you want to choose i don't care prince solomon does not give a fuck right however though I feel like we should always be careful when we're starting to try to deny the identity of black Americans in this country. What my father, mother, grandmother, grandpappy, great grandpappy, uh, aunties, uncles, great aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever, gang members, drug dealers, uh, soldiers, veterans, or not, all right? They contribute to this landmass. And I have every right to speak on what I need to speak on concerning this country just the way a sin does. Be more and you all in the chat. So do not let these people like Tiffany Cross lie to you. I don't like Tiffany Cross and her whole campaign. And she I don't like up uh, there. the other guy that's with her, An yeah. Andrew Gillum, either. I don't even mention him. What I don't. Loser. What a disgrace. You got your ass up with dirty draws and expose a pictures online. All right. That being the case. I'm also tired of the black nepotism. There is a large swath of toxic black celebrity class. I'm not talking about all of them. There's some of them that went on to mind their business, but there's a huge swath of P Diddy black celebrity class that just needs to die. They just need to die. Tiffany Cross sat up there and told what she perceived as useless black men to shut up. Shut up. We Meanwhile, women take the lead, Prince. You be quiet. Y me, get we in the women, back. Get in the back. We women will we not be told women, to shut it. up. We women will not be told to shut up. Broke black men or useless black men. Perceived useless black men. Shut up. But then here comes billionaire 
big jaw LeBron James, and they should have never tell him to shut up and dribble. But you know it, what it is? You a sack chaser, Tiffany Cross. Yes, she is. You a sack chaser. You had LeBron's balls all in your mouth. Oh, he should be able to speak as a successful black man. The other black men are trying to help their black family speak. You try to call her a gold digger. There you go. A cross-eyed hoe. <laughs> that the white pimp dropped. So MSNBC. <laughs> white Jew pimp dropped her ass. Off into the ocean. Swim, bitch. Right? Well, I agree with that. My problem with this uh, gender war thing is, who cares if black men vote overly Demo I mean, Republican? My thing is, if you as black women can get something from your community from the Democrats, great. If black men can get resources from the Republican Party, great. Why are you shooting at each other? Both of your candidates are corrupt, so who cares? It's, that's not the point. The point is... Who can give us the resources we need as a community? Period. That's all. I'm just not with any of this dustiness. Um, Y'all know I was cooking on a cook pack for a moment. I never liked that cross-eyed woman. Tiffany Cross-Eyed. You know, because it was appalling. <laughs> I never... Listen. If I wasn't cool... Um, if I wasn't cool with the nappy-headed hoes Royker comment with the Rutgers University. If I wasn't cool with that, why would I be cool as a black man being told to shut up? But then, oh, the rich niggas get to speak. That's what she was saying. And then that puts into that, then that, that, that perpetuates this toxic aspect that even in inside the community that black men have to wrestle with, that do wrestle with, it's forms of selfishness. We saw that with in, the, in the, the mayor of Atlanta. When yeah. she, she had Killer Mike and Ty on it. She didn't have no respectable black man on She didn't there. have nobody from the community. No. She didn't have nobody that, that didn't have a Reebok deal up there. It was all rich niggas. It's all about the money. It's all about rich black Stacey, niggas. Stacey Abrams with the... Uh, how you show up yeah. for... Uh, What's the two niggas uh, uh, from Atlanta? Are oh, you uh, talking about the 85 South boys? No, no. I'm Which going, my, my brain is going blank now. But the rappers and one killed the other one that went to Centro's house and shit. Mm. I'm forgetting their names right now. Right. Jeezy and um, Gucci Man. Gucci Man. How is Stacey Abrams going to show up to an event while people talking about bodies? Yeah, that we got to be is, real. That is, is crazy. And, I, and here's the thing, and I'll say this, and this is maybe another conversation, maybe for no simp zone, but I, I'm saying about this perpetual ignorance and, and self-deprecation. Don't you be up here as a self-professed uh, woman, right? A, a woman of color in these black elitist spaces. And, well, why, why, are, why are black men in the community? Why won't they give baby when the only black men you actually respect are rich black niggas? So LeBron gets to not shut up and dribble. Like Sin said, Gucci Man and Jeezy, which you know what type of track record both of the niggas got. Oh, they get to speak on political issues concerning the community. T.I. and Killer Mike. Crips need to start a call. Crips need to go into business. Crips, Crips, Crips. Right? They get to stand up there behind the mayor of Atlanta. You didn't put... You did not put one black male community organizer up there. You didn't even put none of the sisters from Fulton County up there. I agree. Like, some of them may say, like, well, we're trying to get the underworld. You do need people in certain parts. We can't just get the educated or nerds. And, and my my problem with that thesis is yeah. you have people in the underworld who are sophisticated and smart who care about their community. As you said, you know, we got people who got shot at five times. And who came back from that and they have community organizations for the kids. Yes. And they just let me ignore that person and let me go to a TI who is was a slave to Leo Cohen and all these other uh people in, in the uh, music industry. Wait a minute, so so you, you what, what you're saying, you don't first of all you're devaluing the black civilian. And you run into fed ran niggas. <laughs> That nigga can't That's do nothing. That's their people. He, they're, the, they're the government. So the government <laughs> said we, all of them are fairing. All of the clubhouse niggas. Let's get our fat boys. Uh, these the fat boys. The fat boys in the building. 
If you're not feds, they ain't gonna promote you as a black person. <laughs> it, it's so disrespectful, and and, and I, I I despise the energy of this whole Tiffany Cross Breakfast Club energy because these people on one hand will complain about what they call the lack of organizational efforts between black civilians which is a lie you all live either on the the rich east coast in the upper hills of manhattan right or you live up in beverly hills on the left coast and you're in hollywood all day but what you do you practice a form of neo-feudalism and you feel the elite get to dictate the lower class to the lower class about their emotions you know have you all noticed about the elites candace owens dave rubin right right even nepo babies like we saw with keisha bottoms that's a nepo baby all of these nepo babies it don't even matter if they're deca millionaires or centurion millionaires or billionaires better yet well just to drop right? this story since you talk so, about them mississippi just pat showed that they had um they gave a lot of the resources to millionaire kids and the black kids that were in poverty trying to get into colleges um they didn't give any money of assistance so that, see, that goes into the point but have you guys noticed with these nepo babies dave rubin is a nepo baby candace owens is a nepo baby all right keisha bottoms in atlanta go look up her history with her family they come from she comes from a well a successful family music background these are all nepo, political ba nepo babies. Harvard, Princeton University. Nepo Look, I don't care if you went to Harvard or Princeton. I don't have a problem with it. But if you're a nepo baby, you all are positioning yourselves just like the elitists in the past and the rest of the oligarchs the world over. You're positioning yourselves to dictate to what you perceive as the lower class about what and how they should feel. Or they marry in because, you know, people may counter yeah. say, well, uh, Candace didn't go to college and they don't know if Candace is a part of no line, but she didn't marry into uh, money. And also be more look like she wants to say something. I don't know. I just feel like this is like an interesting psychology. And I, I talk to um, Prince about this all the time, especially with the identity of like being black and possibly coming from like legacy or having the ability to tap into these things with nepotism. And I feel like what's interesting about them, and I'll use Barack Obama as an example, like he understands or is attached to blackness in some form. He heavily reads on the topic, but then like you center yourself in a place like I'm here to speak for black people, but you don't have a normal black existence. And then you like engorge in all of this type of black content of like an existence you've never had. Then while talking about it, like you've had that existence. So like, you even see it with people coming in like and I, this is not a read on LMA I don't know what was going on with her psychology to be doing this or 21 Savage I don't know what's wrong with them but like when they lie and say they're from Atlanta and they're not but like they actually have an existence like for instance 21 Savage come his parents were doctors so he don't even have a normal shoot -em celebrity up doctors right that's celebrity not a normal doctor. existence so it's like you're centering yourself in an existence that's not yours mm -hmm. meanwhile ignoring an existence that is yours now what I find interesting with the polarity is they have more in common what we see with the imagery of like Will Smith, how he centered his career or like how he set up stuff for like the Fresh Prince. And it's not like that type of black person or that type of iconography has never existed. No, they center themselves in a type of iconography or a type of form of black Americana that's very niche even to other black Americans, you know, and then they want to sit and speak from that on an emotional point or they have a lot of things relatable to it and the only thing they can relate about it relate to it is that they read a book on it um their favorite musician lived this certain type of way that doesn't mean that you have that history and i also don't like how like every time things are always a monolith until people start being specific so like there are specific things that happen to Jamaicans that never happen in America because we don't all have the same history. There are certain things that happen to Afro-Brazilians that I would never experience. The Congolese, they getting their butts whipped right now. I don't know what that's like right now in 2024 to get in dog walk like that. Where they going on over there? God bless them. But everyone has their own unique histories, and I feel like they can speak to that in existence of blackness because there is a, a general culture of blackness but there are so minor differences there are some differences with the ethnic placements or where people are what governments they're under and other things as well and i just feel like when we're entertaining these ideas no matter what black person is from where i feel like it's a slippery slope 
with people like engaging in psychological problems so notice all of the people who have engaged with whether they were american or not whether they were foreign or not they pretended they was from somewhere where they weren't they pretended they was poor when they weren't notice how psychologically unstable they are because the mind is not equipped to cycle in and out of these identities like that you're going to be crazy so like that does not work so like for instance you see how Kanye grew up with a pro-black African-American studies mom. He started doing all this cool stuff. He started doing all this. And look where he is now. The mind is not set up to do all of this stuff. This is why, like, and I'll give you an example outside of this, I think, of race and identity and people associating poorness or maybe economic economic struggle or, like, debauchery with blackness and if you don't come from that they like to perform it because they want to feel more black when we all know that that's not how what blackness is and if you think that's what blackness is you're having an identity crisis <laughs> seek help now when you hear stories about people being adopted and this is like a long fable but they go through an identity crisis one of the oldest stories we heard about this is moses yo what is like the og identity crisis like straight up like yo killed the man murked the man because he was smacking one of his people like that's like og and so like what happens when these people are having these identity crises because they don't understand what blackness is or even they're performing black americana and they're not necessarily coming from black americana which is fine but also understand like you have your own identity and it's just it's going to make you very confused you know so i do see a lot of this going on with psychological problems and i do see a lot of these people have behavioral problems and psychological splits something is not right upstairs that well, is a lot true of them oh go ahead prince no 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 everything she said was absolutely correct and it, it is that, that is something to be said and, and i do believe when we have people that transition from what they perceive as the uh, the lower class or uh lower economies and then they have to function into these spaces of um elitism and 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 wealth and perceptions of wealth too because you have people that are in spaces of wealth but there's a perception of wealth you've seen a lot of as they say broke famous people and how much are they willing to sacrifice their identity to live up to these notions of that we see it all the time look at i mean look at meek mill look at 21 savage scamming a twitch streamer that was pathetic like i mean you know 21 savage one of his more famous records is bank account how many m's i got in my bank account but you poking holes in uno cards to scam a twitch streamer well a lot of them don't have <laughs> the integrity to be like moses moses lived in a upscale elite society and yet epigenetically he saw one of his own getting got and, the and split. no he did Right, right. but he broke like what the fuck this is my people he yeah 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 i'm living the high life but i gotta come i gotta come back because if if i'm the only one left there ain't no truth in this well, yeah. and you got a lot of hollywood weak people who sleep their way to get in then try to diss black people you got fucked in the ass to get where you are most black people are not going to do that have at least some dignity and have a samson ending where Samson fucked up, told someone that wasn't even a part of his crew where his power lied. What did he have to do to correct that action? He had to sacrifice himself, knock them fucking pillars down to save his people. Well, he you realized got too many he had cowards nothing not else. wanting to do that. There was, there was nothing else there. And again, you do have some of these people. There's that initial knee-jerk reaction. This is where cognitive dissonance sets in. With not only just the celebrities, listen, it is what it is, but also politicians. So if you see, let's say your community, let's say you come from Fulton County and you see that they keep annexing huge segments of Fulton County out in Atlanta. They keep annexing a lot of it off. People say, hey, man, what's going on? You know, my my grandmother's house has been in our family for three generations, man. Why is it getting roped off? Right? Why is it getting roped off on some game documentary two shit? Right? And those people in that community entrusted you to represent them appropriately. But you, you know, you in there with other politicians, they give you kickback deals. You know, they're gonna kind of move you up in the, the social elite class behind the scenes. But you see what happens, you hear people crying on the news, you start seeing the protests. Inside of you feel, yeah, you feel some type of way 
But the other side of it, you're like, no, let me ration this out. This is what we're talking about when you're talking about these identity crises, the, these identity splits. You know, Kanye was to go to be more's point to have further context that what she said was absolutely correct. Kanye West's father was one of the first African-American photographers for the, I believe, what now is the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. It was originally two newspapers at one time, but he was the first African-American photographer for the newspaper. His mother, um, either one of his parents, I believe it was his father, but they were tied into as well with the Black Panthers also, right? His mother, all she taught was African-American studies as well. Now, you take a little boy with a baby fat neck at the time. He grows up taking all of this in and you do something is, that would trigger as much cognitive dissonance as I want to be in the entertainment industry. Any black person walking into the entertainment industry, you're going to have, if you, you, there's going to be cognitive dissonance anyway because the entertainment industry was built off of birth of a nation. Unless you make your right? own thing, you're absolutely right. You but a lot of the them, blinds, then. But, and again, for them that are so concerned with status, making your own thing is po nigga shit. Right, they get, that's said, all they say. Right? That's Building what he said to Sway. Sway yeah. said, "It's po yeah, nigga shit. You could do it yourself. Like, you don't know what I got." And I don't then he listen made to nobody. Of it. He that said, "Don't make no more money than me." Right, and he said that Sway don't got it. Don't got it like that. And it's like, yeah. see, that's yeah. that shit. You fucking mm. ignorant nigga talking down because you let your booty hole get touched, and now mm. you think you better than somebody. Well, here's the thing about it. Everybody got a new dance with the devil that the devil already knew. He's like, oh, man, I seen this. Oh, you an electric slide, motherfucker. Ah, oh, shit, you a breakdancing asshole. Oh, okay, you a crumping ass nigga. Oh, okay, you a stomp the yard ass nigga. Oh, you a drumline nigga? Man, I know all this shit. Yeah, he's a traitor. Right? Because of him, yeah. a lot of these white folks in the fashion world are doing sneakers now. And it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I can go to bed, sleep every night. Because they used to always yeah. look down at sneakers as not being of the houses. Because the yeah. houses are cultic. They go back centuries yeah. to prominent families. So they felt sneakers were beneath them. Now because Ye yelled and he was with the French and the Greek and the yeah, Italian. Yeah, no, it's a hip hop. And it's about hip hop. Telling them about how lucrative sneakers can be. And then we saw what, yeah. the, what he did with Adidas. Right. He's such a fucking traitor. But listen, it's beautiful. I can sleep every night knowing what Ye is going through. I have no problem about that. I don't really care. Look, you talking to someone that was a Kanye West fan from the beginning with the Freshman Adjustment Series. Freshman Adjustment Series, all the college dropout is, is a condensed body of work of the Freshman Adjustment Series. They took out the best songs from their mixtape series and made the college dropout. And it's a classic album in hip hop. It, it was a great time when music dropped. You know, I went and bought the college dropout, and then I went and bought Little Brother, right? Uh, the Minstrel Show. Ironically, I didn't know later on Kanye West would become the main star of the Minstrel Show, <laughs> right? So the college dropout. I thought late registration was better. I remember, uh, I remember me and my mother going to buy that album together, cause she loved Kanye West. She said, "I like that little nigga. He tell it like it is." This is, how, this is how ingrained this fat jawed nigga was into the black culture that the mamas was out there buying the records. Wake up, Mr. West! With Avril Lavigne, I remember she used to ride around, she used to ride around just listening to that record. Then this nigga gonna roll out his mouth and say the things he said. Slavery was a choice. When Kanye West, you got to understand what goes on with somebody like Kanye. I always told you I called him the reverse Tupac. People at first was, oh, man, that I don't believe it. I said, that nigga is the reverse Tupac. When Kanye West stood up there and said, George Bush don't care about black people. Mm, the black Americans that didn't even listen to his music. He caught them, too. They said, man, I like that nigga. I heard black boys, dope dealers, pimps, hookers. Prostitutes, businessmen, crips, bloods, vice lords, Christians. GSDs, Christians, Muslims, Muslims. He didn't know. Let's be to a lot. The brother <laughs> Kanye, he speaks the truth. He didn't know he had an army behind him, and he uh, sacrificed that army like his mom yeah. was sacrificed when he went into that Hollywood uh, lifestyle. 
This is why you have to understand why Kanye is where he is. At that point in time, Jay Z can rap as many circles as he want about his wife being Beyonce. He was not fucking with George Bush. Don't care about black people. Kanye wasn't even from New Orleans. And the reason why the nigga didn't know anything, because again, he was insecure. He did not know what he had until it was gone. And then after you fall off, you find out how good you had it because everybody tells you. No, man, nigga, you was a shit, man. He going into little Jewish circles. Oh, I loved you, man. You was my favorite rapper. What? He go to the Mexicans. Oh, yeah, Holmes, I love you. Everybody fucked with Kanye West. Everybody. Kanye West was always bigger than 50 Cent. When they put them two niggas together and they said, oh, they about to go head there. I said, man, Kanye about to eat that nigga up. It ain't even a question. No jaw rule. The point is this is when you're played with insecurity, that is what's going to happen. You don't know your value. He cut his hair off like the Samson nigga. He don't have no power. He's a blind Danite right now. <laughs> nigga going to pull the pillars down. <laughs> That's the best thing Kanye can do. At this point. Yeah, because you got to think about it. This is how powerful this nigga was with his energy. I'm going to leave it on this with concerning Kanye because I don't want to make the whole stream about Kanye. Because I get irritated sometimes just thinking about it. That the, 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 With the sweat running down that neck. That yes. hot dog neck it is it's getting irritating kanye west energy was so strong the reverse tupac nigga that he was he invigorated the right he made them believe they have a chance because they know they need black culture in order to get anywhere all these people knew this is why once they get what they want they shit on us and then they repeat the same cycle so that's what it is and you know what i love you gg you you can in in the context of lyricism djing backflipping writing we can discuss whether the talents of kanye west is overrated or not i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the effect that he had on black folks in america that was different and still to this day i have not seen no other nigga like that i haven't that's why drake was crying oh <sighs> Why did he do this to me? <sighs> Drake was getting there, but he he went to Wyoming, and that was the end of that. And the only difference, <laughs> is, you're right. The only difference <laughs> is though, um, nobody so, you know, it's different when you have that when you have a height and you have that recognition, and you said what you said about the president of the United States. You know, and and moving forward, that's that's all black folks wanted to see happen, and. It agitated the bushes so much that the old mother, before she died, had to come out and sit on Larry King. And she was angry. But it forced. It forced a lot of people's hands politically because what he said, some people said, well, oh, Prince, all he just said is George Bush don't care about black people. No, you don't understand. A lot of activists that was on the ground that had political ties that were trying to move the politicians in their backyard when Ye said what he said and they got to apply more pressure about it and they didn't want they again like Ida B. Wells when she wrote to Europe like hold on these hoes tripping over here they lynching black folks America said no we're not we're not no no let's put some policies in place to make it sure we don't look like we don't want to look like assholes and pigs to the world well that's what he said Man. birth of a nation we talk about media if you go yeah. look at media we're enemy number one you go look at right. um when an Arab man is on a flight or when an Asian guy or white guy, how they just mostly just focus. And I'm not sure, for maybe from time to time you get a little bit of race, but it's mostly focused on the individual. Mm. When it's a black guy or a black woman, all they talk about is race, yeah. nothing else. And they're liars. Mm -hmm. They've always been lying about our people. This is why uh, black people just need to um, walk with confidence and use their word magic. Because the moment you snap the spine... Of these cowards, they cry like a little bitch. That's why they. And, and to your point, that's yes, why they were so happy to see uh, Ye uh -huh. go the opposite direction. <sighs> Saying, I'm telling you, I was already worried when the nigga showed up with Amber Rose. I said, Ugh, I don't know, man. You know, and 
the, the Kardashians have became a a multi billion dollar family, which was worse because he started talking about bleach assholes when he got with them, the Kardashians. I was like, that's gross. I said, well, it looks like I'm about to go listen to Lupe Fiasco. That's over with. That was fun, right? You know, and you know, this is why they invest so heavily in these black fraudulent personalities, Myron Gaines and. Uh, the little short nigga that's with him right can't even get started on the candace owens things because it's all bought and paid for heritage foundation okay which we will talk more about it on patreon but this is one of, look it's one of the reasons why we're demonetized I and mean, we just keeping it gangster with you all our channel have been demonetized some time ago sin and i kept moving we didn't cry like Myron Gaines and his nigga when they got demonetized. Oh, he said they, like in his side bitch. Yeah, in his <laughs> tramp. Them niggas, and all of the out, you never heard Sid and I talk about alpha this, alpha that. We gave you all a very educated um, podcast and video about alpha, beta, all the way down to sigma and the placements about this and what it means with personality types, right? That's as far as we went with it. When YouTube released them from their partnership program, Myron looked like he was about to cry live. Ah, use a hoe. <laughs> right. I said that use a hoe. If you really tough Tony, yeah. you should be able to survive even without the monetization of YouTube if you're really about being a truth teller. Yes. So he had to go over there to White Mama, Just Pearly. Hey, if it wasn't for just Pearly, we wouldn't know what to do without you. I said, but you always had the white titty in your mouth. That was the problem to begin with. And I am glad you put your blue lips where they belong on that white salami meat. <laughs> now, I mean, if you got a white girl, a white wife, and y'all listening to the show, shouts out to you. But I'm talking about these two. We're not talking about your snow bunny queens. We're not talking about Or that. kings. But what I am saying is this, though. Look, Senator, now we got demonetized a long time ago, as y'all can see why. You know it is what it is it is true if you're not kicking that candace owen shit if you're not kicking that two-tone shit if you're not kicking that myron Gaines shit if you're not kicking that nick fuentes shit these these think tanks will not reward you or they will try to interrupt your process thank you all for uh you know again supporting us in our endeavors like you guys have always been doing sid and i are gonna keep pushing and be more all of us we're gonna keep pushing no matter what our patreon too y'all have been really helping yes, us with yeah. our patreon shout out to y'all y'all really showed up over and there. uh again we're gonna have our nickelodeon esoteric breakdown tomorrow friday at uh seven, seven. o'clock p.m but you know <laughs> to prince point Certain people got broken financially and they went back to Kunin. Yes. Okay, I opened my butt. You know, we go on the um, uh, Ali route. How long Ali for years? <laughs> five. Five years. Yeah, five years at the apex of his career. Muhammad Ali, they was uh, snatching up his money. Yes. That's why I get people talk about, I saw that guy from, um, yeah. what's that show where they do the people's businesses? Evaluation. Did Shark Tank. The Shark Tank ball headed white boy. Yeah. And he was like, What happened to Trump? It's Kevin just, O'Leary. Yeah, Kevin O'Leary. Like, mm -hmm. shut up, you bitch. Shut up. Trump is, is not the first one to have nothing seized financially. Muhammad Ali, they took everything from yeah, him. They, they did this to a lot of Americans decades before this Trump shit. And I can't stand these wealthy white boys. Or hypothetically, because he, I don't know, he looked like he got a foreign face. But anyway, I'm just tired of them crying about things being uniquely new when it's not. Go open a book on American fucking history. Well, yeah, and, and, and just, to, you know, the context there to you all. One of the reasons why our content isn't boring for you all is, listen, Sin and I, along with Be More, Sin and I, ew, we actually saying how we feel. I'll say that again. One of the reasons why the content isn't boring for you all, and it is interesting, as you guys have told us, you know, it's because we we we're actually talking about how we feel. We're talking about how we feel, even when when we're on the microphone, whether we agree or not, we talk about how we feel. We tell you what we see, we tell you how we feel about what we see, and we keep it moving. We're not 
I, I, we're not trying to stay to a point of the party stay to a point of anti-woke or pro-woke that that that's why a majority of this shit is born but guess what the extent of their so-called revolution is how far is it will they get monetized or demonetized right i see so many people <laughs> only focus on on the revolution is them being monetized or not you're a bitch if you can't survive being demonetized, and also I'm being very clear, I am not talking about regular families who do good content. No. And then their monetization get hit, and they're like, what's going on? Not talking about y'all. Y'all are regular everyday people making just happy content and making everybody smile. I'm not talking about y'all. People I'm should about, leave you all alone. I'm talking about the, the people who said they're revolutionary, and then they get demonetized and they're like begging to figure out. How to get back into the club or something like that? I never, if, I never forget that Myron Gaines' face and all of his. He was crying. He was crying. He's putting on clans. <laughs> I and, guess guys, it's over. It was a good run. And you know when they demonetize <laughs> his ass, right? When he start talking about Israel. <laughs> now you didn't put on. He didn't put on whole clansman hoodie. That's hate speech to me. Yes, he did. That's hate speech to me. I can't put on a swastika hat and stand in front of the camera. Without somebody reaching out to us, hey, uh, Prince. But Oliver. he was able to put a KKK mask on and tell two Canadian black people he wanted them dead. I said, oh, okay, so you hard body in the tank. They says you released from our partnership program. Huh? 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 <laughs> no. Again, guys, you know we pay for this a lot of this stuff ourselves and from y'all. Um, yeah. guys, this is like the end of it. Yeah, so you know one of the worst and best things that happen to folks in the internet with their content is that monetization took place married with the algorithm monetization and the algorithm monetization and the algorithm is one of the best and worst things that have happened to the content online it's wonderful when people that are artists and they get to make multiple videos about felt tip markers right in the history of it and all these other things of that nature but then it's bad because you got people like myron Gaines and all of these quote-unquote truthers anti-woker woker granola wokester folks out here how you be how can i can't none of you can if you're getting money from directly and i mean directly like not just off of some platform or site like they they you get hired like from the daily wire and you're getting paid by those people or if you're getting paid by turning point or heritage foundation or any of those, those things and you come and say anti-black things you can never be trusted unless you actually prove that you're not associated with those things anymore i'm not impressed with candace being on the breakfast club because anybody could smoke them politically they're like they're not even first level. Like they're they're slow. They're, they're chicken like feed. What, like everybody smokes them. Yvette, Andy, uh, 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 Umar Johnson, being able to destroy Charlemagne and DJ Envy when it comes to politics is easy. That's I easy. expect Candace to be able to at least do that. Uh, you know what? I, I expect Twenty One Savage to beat them. Absolutely. I expect Damn it. no. Listen, here's the other side of it too. If you stay in to the same talking point over and over, like Candace Owens, there there is there's nothing she is saying that's groundbreaking. They are wasting your time with another paid black personality. Al Sharpton's too old to do it now. <laughs> a lot of the yeah, for real. the saggy skin. Yeah, a lot of it. Tommy trying to come back. He looked like a bloated seal in the face. <laughs> he ain't got the same jazz anymore with it. It's just, he ain't got the energy. He trying. Lips getting more purple. Right? So they put a black woman in front of you all. Right? And she's such she was such a weirdo. She showed up with to you all with Wheaties in her hair. Candace was so raggedy when she came out. She showed up. She did not care. She definitely looked like an excommunicated black person when she first showed up. Right? But once the money starts coming in, the more sponsors coming, she cleaned up, she get the set. Here's the thing about it. I remember one guy tried to at me. I can't remember who he is, brother, if you're listening. Prince, Prince, man. You, you won't talk about the Jews. 
Candace Owens, you should bring it real. I said, so, sir, how does this make sense? Candace Owens is complaining about the Jews while being employed and played by uh, a Jewish platform, a Jewish-owned platform. Professor Griff said all this without none of their money. How is it that you are saying all these things? Let's be real. To Sin's point, Professor Griff, the legendary Professor Griff of, of uh, the legendary group Public Enemy, he said this, his career got interrupted. And he still kept going on. He still kept going. Candace keeps saying the same shit. Ain't nothing happening. She's not losing sponsors. <laughs> what are we talking She's about? She's on the breakfast club. You saw ADL, the leader of ADL, threaten everybody on the breakfast club and Nori. And they took the gay video down. She said similar things. And she's walking around. No issues. Nobody said anything. No no interviews. Like that. And also about the breakfast clubs. Uh, they have low IQs. Let's be real. Biden smoked them. Yes. Kamala smoked. Who who can't smoke on a uh, uh, on a, a Breakfast Club uh, pack? I mean, it's easy. Any Democrat or Republican, <clears throat> any liberal or any conservative right. could go on the Breakfast Club and feed their ego and win. They're also, not that bright. Benny Siegel with one lung smoked them. Fact, nigga. Charlemagne be but at the height of Charlemagne power. He was smoking on easy targets. People. From he, the rap, people bring rap, up low IQ shit. rappers. He was he was shitting on. That's easy to diss. People always bring up how terrible and terrifying Charlemagne is or was. Yeah, I I said neither. Even when Charlemagne got out there, and he talking about people, babies and daddies, and I'm the da- nigga. That's for other niggas. As I said before, he has inspired nothing with thought crimes. There's nothing. Influenced by Charlemagne over here. Nigga, we pull from a whole different space that you don't fly in. Right. People use the moment of him making little mama cry, and you find out the girl's mama Mother's had dead. dead. That's what I was about to say. Her, like her, her mama, mama was dead. dead. And she got bullied by, like, you talk about Jay Z when he made a dope ass record with Alicia Keys, New York. And she was getting shitted on by them. Her mama died. And then this bald headed hooligan gonna come over here and basically say yeah. to troll her yeah, but, for Nikki and be a mean girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really did. He did. He did. And it's always booger flicking niggas that do this. Right. Uh, only to diss uh, Nikki years later right. and leave her for Cardi B. So listen, her being on the Breakfast Club means nothing. Like we said before. Everybody else that go on their quote unquote anti Jewish tour, they lose everything. And she lost nothing. She, so, she's getting more popular. That's why I said, and you Jews know. Keep, uh, uh, and, and them Jews keep paying her. For some of the from brothers. The Daily Wire. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, he said, oh, Prince, you ain't going to talk about Candace and how she dealing with the Jews. I said, she employed by Jews. <laughs> what are you talking about? What am I supposed to say? Like, what is that to say? <laughs> ben Shapiro and them still feeding her them checks. You don't even know if this is a psyop. You don't know if Kenneth Owens working with uh, yeah, Daily Wire about? on the online to, to start arresting people because y'all yeah. forget. In most of the states, it's illegal to, to boycott Israel or say certain things about Jewish people. Y'all don't know if she trying to rack it up yeah. so y'all can be in them new prisons <laughs> that are being yeah, built across the United States. Oh. You got... You got billionaires uh, uh, basically investing in, in, in uh, prisons in Baltimore, Nebraska, Across the Georgia, right. New York. I wonder I wonder who's going to be filling this up. <laughs> That's something we'll talk about is uh, the well, billionaire, the one billion dollar to two billion dollar prisons that are being constructed across this country. I know they're vying for one in Fulton County. Uh, one is in. Uh, as they have it in Baltimore, and then they have another. They have other proposals as well. They're all set to be completed by 2027 to 2029, too. By the way, so again, Candace Owens, nothing is going on there. Trust me. I got you a screenshot. Uh, yeah, you can't. You can't sit up there and do that, quote unquote, that constant tour uh, with Jews all the time, and nothing's happening to her. I got a screenshot. Yeah. Of the Daily Wire and Elon Musk uh, trashy uh, platform promoting Candace on the Daily Wire. She's like three days ago. 
So how is old Ben and all them upset when she's still getting promoted by them? Come on now, it's money. Like at the very least, let's just say this. If he's being shysty, but he's being put in a situation where he can't fire her, then why are you still advertising her? That's a lie. They can fire whoever they want to. That's a lie. They ain't, they, they ain't never been not one invincible nigga that they will call and label an anti-Semite and that they can't be fired like they got it like that. No, if you can't be fired, then it's an agenda altogether. Right, and also Charlemagne didn't have um, Jess Hilarious on there, I think, so Jess couldn't um, couldn't check anybody. And uh, Charlemagne can't do nothing because Candace is petty enough that she would have had uh, Jessica, Reed. Jessica Reed on her show yeah. if Charlemagne tried anything. So Charlemagne was a good little boy. He yeah. can't not say anything because there are people petty enough to put Jessica Reed on their yeah. show. And it's, Candace uh, is one of them. Candace is that. Look, she said Rabbi Shmuley killed Michael Jackson. <laughs> Tells you how fucking petty she is. <laughs> one thing about that dumb mule faced nigga, he knew what he was doing. They can say whatever they want to say, but trust me, it, it, there's nothing happening there. Now, Dave Rubin being a little hurt bitch, that's genuine. Because yeah. he, he's definitely emotional. We are not friends anymore. Well, do you, I, 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 but you see it's because she surpassed him too as far as visibility goes oh yeah i will give candace this way more charismatic actually uh dave rubin have zero charm no like dead fish zero charm candace more charming to a lot of people she's also attractive easy win for what she's selling and she's still being uh uh invested in by uh, the daily wire which is jewish ran and owned. right 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 so uh dave rubin is mad he got yeah. a stupid gay face. Uh, he, he, no ooh, one's really ooh, interested ooh, in him. Dave Rubin here, that was homophobic. And also notice that all the people who are anti-black are clicking up with each other. Dave Rubin, you saw Patrick had the black water yeah. dude on there who said that Africa needs to be recolonized. Africa, South America need to be recolonized. Well, who y'all don't have the manpower? You don't have the manpower. Go do that and watch your uh, population uh, decline even further. And now I want to say this too. Uh, the military has stated that for white males, this is the lowest admittance rate into the military out of U.S. history. For all of the anti-woke, pro-patriotic, white Christian male talking points. And I say white evangelical Christian male nationalists because even white Christians, there are white Christians that don't agree with the nationalists. And a lot of the nationalists are masquerading around as white Christian when they're really just racist nationalists. Right. right. So what you have right. here is at this point in time, the military, these are generals that are saying this. This is the lowest percentage of uh, admittance rate that. It is being administered into the military so for all of their bullshit talking points take this country back they're not signing up for the military to defend anything the other side is this going back to candace owens in the breakfast club saying and just for us to stand corrected uh jess hilarious was there but she was told basically to play ball oh so she didn't ask no questions she didn't, there, there was no real kickback there was nothing there was nothing so she wasn't even really talking. It was like I said, mm. all bought and paid for. Breakfast Club, they ain't got no teeth. I'm Snagapuss. <laughs> the Snagapuss Club. <laughs> they ain't got no teeth. They can't bite nothing or nobody. Well then she knows her her homeboy could get jammed up if she if right. she did say something. Okay. All right. And so as you see, a lot of people right now, they're lying. They're fronting. They're stunting. They're faking. That's all they're doing right now. So politically, uh, it's bullshit. This whole it's sitting on as we talked about Kyrie Irving when we said people that are trying to interrupt his career for him operating as a, a United States citizen. He wasn't a politician when he was tweeting. He's a famous athlete. Let's let's keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't hold political office. Kyrie Irving did not hold political office. He's a famous athlete. That's it. As well-known athletes, they tweet shit every day that we don't care. Right? So, we spoke about that when people would say, well, you know, he needs to be canceled and all this other. We thought it was stupid. But 
what I'm not going to do is sit up here and get behind a liar, a scammer. This whole thing, and I, and some of the, and I'm, I'm gonna say this: some brothers don't know what they're into until they see it. A lot of you all didn't know y'all was into bitchy type women until you saw Candace Owens. You didn't know you was into mean girls until you saw Candace Owens. I saw one guy in the comment section. She gets on my fucking nerve, but I'm turned on by her. Let that be the extent of your support for her, but don't be in Prince Solomon face saying, I won't talk about what she talk about. She is employed by Jewish people. It ain't like she started up her own independent shit and she's saying the same thing. They allow it because they're cool with it. Because at the end of the day, what Candace does normally make sure supported by anti-black agendas you can talk about this uh, this family fundamentalist shit all you want, but most of the shit you're speaking about has to do with a lot of anti-black shit. In fact, for you to get when you and Kanye West linked up, y'all both was linking up on re-lynching or trying to lynch Harriet Tubman's spirit. So let's just be honest with that. So some of the brothers online, and I specifically see, and I see some of the sisters too, because they some of them might like the way Candace dress, or they feel like she's exemplifying some sort of predatorial energy that they're looking for in, in themselves too. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If that girl didn't spun the NAACP out of money, she's spending everybody out of money. <laughs> That's the thing we keep forgetting. Uh, Jay-Z keep telling y'all from the very first track, you can't knock the hustle. He stayed to that. Whether he put on a wig, take it off, give you a fade, put on a jersey, button note, wear funeral suits, Jay-Z is still always being a Brooklyn hustler. Okay? Same thing. That's how I look at Candace Owens all the time, man. I get got. Can you talk about No, there's nothing to talk about. She's a scamming Caribbean. They say yes, yeah, she's a scamming Caribbean. They say she's Haitian, right? I don't know. Is she Haitian? Mm -mm. What they say? She's Jamaican? What is Candace Owens? Because she said as a proud Caribbean, I did remember her saying that. And I'm not saying you can't celebrate your black identity in America, but I did see her celebrate her Caribbean identity while castigating black American culture. Right, and you could be a proud Caribbean, no problem with that, but don't be castigating us. Right? And then you don't make no dope shit either. Like... Buster Rhymes got on people's nerves, but at the end of the day, people was like, whatever, who gives a fuck? He old and it's Buster Rhymes. Nobody cares. Love him, but when he said black like America doesn't have a culture, you totally fucking disrespectful. Out of pocket. Right, right, you're right. You're right about that. Oh, she from St. Thomas. Oh wow. Sorry about that, you all. Sorry about that. Yeah. So again, the whole thing about her and the Jews and Rabbi Shmuley and she's really giving it to them. Rabbi Shmuley looks like he enjoying it with his ugly ass. Like yeah. <laughs> well, again, this is. Uh, but they both are. They both are talking about sexual tension. And I says, how about this? I don't want to imagine neither one of you motherfuckers naked. And she says, I think you selling butt plugs with your daughters is weird and gross. Why is she always talking about all of this dark sexual repression? They both get off on it. <laughs> they said, damn, saying smacking. <laughs> Sid, I told you they can hear you on the microphone, babe. <laughs> it's all right, beautiful. She said, oh, JMG says, send me a plate, Sin. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. So listen, as far as I'm concerned, Rabbi Shmuley and Rabbi Owens, they got some BDSM play playing out right before you all. But who? Rabbi Shmuley? Ben Shapiro has a Mars and Scorpio for those individuals that are not familiar with that talk. We talk further about it on the Patreon again on Friday. Tomorrow we'll be breaking down. Uh, or we will be having an exclusive stream about the conversation concerning Nickelodeon and nasty ass Dan Schneider. Um, and be more. She has some she has some things, some findings herself. Sin is going to be breaking some things down as I will. Also, that's again, that's on Patreon. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow on Patreon, the esoteric tier. That's going to be at uh, seven o'clock. Uh, See, so you were saying something else. 
He do like that Candace Owens. I, you know, that's what I said. This, Candace ain't doing nothing but being a black dom over there. She's a black dominatrix. All right? That's what they like, though. That's why I said some of the fellas online, I'm, I'm just being real with you all. Some of you all are lying. A lot of you all enjoy femdom energy. This is why a lot of times you guys try to activate the bitch in most of the women you come across. You get what I'm saying? Like, not with sin and be more. But there's been situations where a woman has gotten on my nerve and I've cursed her out. And she's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Girl, if you don't get your toxic ass away. <laughs> that is not how you strike up a regular social conversation. But yeah, there's a lot of that dom energy, fem dom energy uh, that you see Candace Owens parading around in. A lot of the fellas are into it and they're lying. They're lying about it. Them boys be in a conversation. I see it all the time. I hate that she looks so good. I thought so, nigga. You know, the little old, old little poor Susie Q when she was trying to be nice to your ass. You know, you was just being mean. And she's like, I don't know why he's being mean. I bet if you cursed his ass off. Oh, man, I love her, man. She got some spunk. That's what I want. <laughs> well, infamous, at least you know who the hell you are. He says, I disagree. I don't like that energy. Who? Infamous, are you a Scorpio? Sin is asking. She says, are you a Scorpio? It's a different energy. You know, but then, no, there's a lot, of, a lot of guys. That's what Candace is doing over there, Femdom. Y'all don't know. She could be pegging Ben Shapiro at night. Y'all have no idea what the fuck is going on over there at the Daily Wire. Remember, on the right, in the far right media, it's a bunch of freaks. We showed y'all mom for lesbians. I mean, moms for liberty. Y'all don't know what type of parties they having over there. Okay? Did y'all know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we felt Diddy was weird and we heard stories, but once the lawsuit came out, we didn't know it was that bad. We did. We right? Live shows, we did. Well, we, we talked about this uh, years ago. In fact, on our one of our very first videos Sid and I did, we was joking about um, Cassie keeping evidence in her phone and what was in the lawsuit. Infamous is a Virgo. Infamous is a Virgo. He's, no, he, he, wants, he says he's a Virgo. All right. Yo, I'm just saying, you don't know. You don't know what Candace Owens is, why she's over there dominating them white boys like that. That's what she could be doing. And again, God bless them if that's what you're doing. But, like, come on now. Let's be real. You don't know what type of parties is going on over there. They in the business of entertainment and content, like the rest of these folks up here. He had mom for liberty, mom for they was every day they were complaining about lesbians and gay men and trans women. Yeah. Turned out the woman was up there uh all across and between the legs of another woman. Oh, you know sin babe. Oh, I warned you, I told you I was plugging back in. <laughs> also, be more look like she wanted to say something. Uh to a mic, be more please. At a mic, please. Hey. They need to hear you. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey, but y'all know she was with the girlfriend longer than she was married. That's what I'm saying. She's See? a whole butch. This bitch yeah. is like, She was with the girl for like 15 that was years. An arranged and the marriage. husband like 10 or something like or 12 or something. That was an know. arranged marriage with that man. Yeah, he coming out and there. And that's why he sexually assaulted her. How he sexually assault your boo thing that you that you was with five years before him? He knew he what time jealous. it is. He knew what time it was. And she an evil little cunt. Because you will let your your first uh, love get well, get sexually her assaulted. Her husband. She, she called the police on her husband? <laughs> This shit is ghetto. Woo! What is this telenovela? Yes, Woo! it was. This is Telemundo soap opera drama. It is. Back to the mic, be more please. Okay. That she called the police on her husband for raping the girlfriend. Whoa! That's Ziggler! Crazy. That's crazy. And then she gonna sit up there with a straight face. When you listen to the audio, she said I have someone who was sexually assaulted. It's like a third person. I thought that's you. You called the police for nothing. Man, if you don't get your ass out of here, mom. She, she called the police on the arranged marriage. I can't wait for them to make the movie. So this b bitch portrays herself, marries a man, and she probably a dyke, and then allowed the guy to to sexually assault her boo thing. Then she called the cops on him. Well, my then question she is, she uh, did it so she could stay in power with moms for lesbians. My question <laughs> is, what's his real identity? Is he messing with children? I don't know that bloated face white man. Look, Look I, is he messing with you? That's what I'm saying about the right in general. Like I said, 
people are trying to act like Candace. Oh, you don't know what she's doing over there. We talk about Ziggler. Ziggler yeah. is one of the founders of Moms for Liberty, which yeah. is also known as Moms for Lesbians. That's what, yeah, that's what she we call it. She had a girlfriend for 15 fucking years, and then she married a, a beard. Uh, a beard. And the beard sexually assaulted her girl, her boo thing, because he that's got what jealous. Well, they both were smashing her allegedly, but, you know. Oh, they both smashing. What is they probably drug addicts. I don't know what they're doing. But I will say this, like I said. It's not what you think. And I'm going to say to some of you other dumb niggas out there. So to some of these dumb niggas out here that are trying to get out here. You're not backed by a Jewish network like Candace Owens to be out here talking about Jewish people. Like this. They're trying to mimic the far right is what I'm saying. Some of you no, all don't. You all don't. No, there's some of them. Talking not, about just Israel, talking about. Because it's not about perfectly all Jews. Fine. talking about Zionists. Yeah, that's perfectly you know. fine. I'm not talking about. I'm, you talking about just being belligerent and just saying and just, all Jews are this or that. Like yeah. the dumb nigga that got demonetized on X. No, he's. Who? The one on X. What's his name? Uh, the Don't? black nigga. Don't cry. Yeah. yeah. He oh, got out there. Was he was out there talking about? Uh, yeah, but Elon is a liar. He encouraged uh, it and was paying everybody. And then well, when Ben Shapiro made him go to Israel, that's when well, who he got started, it though? But sin, he no, no, started no, no, demonetizing no, 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 no. people. Sin, racists do not lie. Racists practice racism. Dom lied to himself. As a black nigga with ugly locks in his head, that he need to cut them dying well, shit out. He did respond to us respectfully one time on X. So I don't, you know, if when people respond right. with respect to us, I give them respect back. I'm just saying for you people out there, for you niggas out there that are out here trying to mimic this far right campaign, and they lie to you and they put a black woman's face out there like Candace Owens, who's not married to a black man. She's married to an overtly racist white man. And some of you black boys get out here. Y'all see Officer Tatum. Y'all see some of these other. You see Candace. Y'all remember Tommy. And you're like, oh, I can get out here too. Well, damn, why they get me shit? Well, black, pe black people did allow themselves to get fooled by Tommy. I was never into the guy. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there. look. There's an aspect of some black people who um, like the Uncle Ruckus energy. But I think it's time to retire that because we got to grow up like black kids are on the line if, if, if you're at least a selfish ass adult at least think about the children no puff steam like they on x they're talking about showing videos of black children getting into little scuffles i mean even as small as 10 on basketball court if it was a white little boy and they're talking about killing black kids and y'all and and i don't i don't get why you had to be careful about where you're Why, putting investments some, yeah, of time in. Some of y'all not understanding how dangerous this could be. You, you, you know, you putting your kids in danger no different than um, the Democrats when they allow black and and uh, Hispanic and other type of gangs uh, uh, giving straight bullets to little black kids. And this is what I'll say. Saying, this is for all of these black personalities out here. Because you all are still being cute. Look, I appreciate Anything is if people if they want to engage in conversation, I have no problem with that. But you're still being cute. I'm not getting on here supporting eugenesis. I agree. If I got look, I got family members, they hardcore crips. You should tell them all the time, bro. I can't I can't fuck with that shit. Yo, man, would you come out here, you know, whoop whoop whoop, 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 we got you? Nah, I'm good. Why? Right, Cause y'all bullets just shooting old ladies in their wigs. The fuck I'm gonna do with that? I'm gonna hop in a car with you and hop out, and people in the neighborhood are terrified. You got adults literally shitting on themselves when they see that blue rag. I'm not doing it. So if I don't do it for them, I ain't gonna do it for no black person online that espousing white supremacist talking points. You have people online professing that black children should be murdered comfortably all over X. You have people online are saying when they see a black woman or black man on camera getting horribly disfigured, oh, they deserved it, right? And you got people such as Elon Musk just lying about black people every day when he's he get on the side, the just pushing, yeah, everything, I've seen right? Gangs fighting each other like in Boston. And there's Irish gangs. There's a lot of white gangs in Boston. 
and you got his hordes of, of boy toys that Elon has that are in the algorithm, not putting any context, any story, and they just keep lying, lying about Breonna Taylor, lying about George Floyd, even Candace Owens lied about George Floyd. Um, it's just people lying, 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 and lying. It's not about the fentanyl. It doesn't matter if he was on drugs. They executed him once. Rule of law, since these people always talk about rule of law, rule of law number one, when you submit to the police they have no jurisdiction they have no right to kill you they cannot execute you it's against the law well this is why the cop darren went to prison and i'll say this again just to put this out here we it's just what it is right now what they keep trying to hold on to is death talking points at the end of the day it's an anti-humanist agenda Get they can say whatever they want to say yeah, exactly they can say whatever they want to say this is an anti-humanist agenda if you are comfortably online getting behind gospels because the reason why i call it gospel because you have a lot of fraudulent preachers out here men and women if you can get online and comfortably accept the notion that this set of people should be murdered they should be killed or their life is less just because you've been told a lie about them just because you disagree with one person's talking point they haven't violated you they haven't ordered people to murder folks they just simply existed and you disagree with their talking point this tells you what type of uncivil society we've already been pushed into because you can't even have a disagreement with people without them flaring all up by the nostrils, getting angry and spit flying out of their mouth. And you've never met them. You can be in New York, they're in Idaho, and they're talking about how much they hate you. Well, just Think answer, about that. You're right because um, one thing is like uh, Mencina, you know, the lying ass Mexican who was stealing from jokes from other Mexican people and black and white comedians. One thing he said was wrong. He said, oh, you know, um, the black gangs are slow. They just kill black people. The KKK, at least those motherfuckers knew where to point their weapons. You want to know why white population is so low? That's not true. A lot of white supremacist groups have killed other white people in large numbers. It's just not talked about. Even when you think about the Oklahoma City bomber, that was a lot of white people who got who got bombed that day. Timothy McVeigh. With, yep, and their children. And if you notice on their mass shootings, yes, sometimes it's a 100% black church or grocery store. But they have also have shot up places that were predominantly white. Statistically, remember with mass that, shooters, that, um, they've actually expired the lives of more white people. Yeah, remember that white woman who got shot in the face mm-hmm. by... Uh, white supremacist oh yeah or the white woman that was ran over that was ran over in the car vehicle he did not look these white supremacists will kill any and everyone including children well and candace owens care. doesn't talk about those things no she doesn't because that's against the agenda listen tommy sotomayor and candace owens is the same person and this is where I talk about the aspect of the dark mother, the dark matriarch. That is what Candace Owens is operating under. The same behaviors that most people can identify in a man very quickly when his masculinity is toxic. They are very slow to identify the same energy when it comes through dark matriarch. Well, Tommy is very feminine. He's a very feminine male. Right, but the same point stands, like I stated. Yeah, you're right about that, but this is what I'm highlighting here, too, because when Tommy Sotomayor ran up and talked about he was going to shoot that black woman in the face on the side of the highway, that was a man approaching a woman in a threatening manner. I agree. So, again, I'll make this statement. One of the things that they were able to do by accident, brilliantly, with the likes of hiring someone like Candace Owens, they used dark matriarchy. The same behaviors... I even see some of the fellas, I love you all, some of the fellas that don't mess with Tommy Sotomayor, Candace Owens has the same talking points. The only difference is she is a black woman, which makes you hesitant to even identify or even I see that that energy is just as threatening. In fact, it can be even more threatening because 
she is a more acceptable energy in her presentation of the form of femininity that she presents it as. Right, because she's not as aggressive as him. So she, she, ain't, she ain't gonna be out on the road pulling out a gun on people. There you go. And so when you're when you're maneuvering an audience, a crowd, feminine energy, femininity, or feminine divine energy, or feminine force is much needed this is how politicians move the nation i agree that's why even tommy for one a short yeah. uh, for a couple years was popular because he was very feminine yeah. they even liked the femininity in him he was a very feminine guy i didn't watch the show i didn't like him because i don't i don't like listen to guys like that i don't you know and i'm not talking yeah. about sexual orientation i'm just talking about like guys who are like very feminine in that way i don't like listening to their shows so I just wanted to make that clear when people keep so because uh, there's some fellas they keep like I'm not doing a no simp zone on Candace Owens political talking points. If I do anything, it'll be have to do with the dark energy, the mother energy, because it's very effective. The guys that were complaining about other stuff, even other women, Candace Owens comes out here and severely lies in your face. Oh, someone said Cynthia G. That's another good one too, GG. And you know why? She's talking about black men needed to be aborted. But you know and why? And Omar Johnson gave her too much grace. If a if a black man has said that dumb shit, Omar go. Johnson, like I'm, I'm gonna abort little. We should the the solution may be to abort little black girls. Uh -huh. Omar Johnson probably would have slapped the shit out of that nigga. Well, it's but because, because of his, Cynthia his placement. G said it. Yep. It was like, sister, let me try to convince you. And look, yeah. I like Omar Johnson. He makes me laugh. He's a very funny guy. But he was. It was more coming from a let me help you. <laughs> well, because there's there's sexism in that. Because there's this notion that if a woman is espousing war, like Cynthia G, that somehow she's misguided and she needs to be helped. But if a man comes out and says the same thing, kill him. Take him down. Take his fucking head off. How is it that you could not recognize the threat as equal? Well, in fact, I can even argue the fact that people like you would allow Cynthia G to breathe more with such toxic talking points would make her imminency of her domain a bigger threat. Again, Candace Owens has a she's the it's the same energy as Tommy Sotomayor. The only difference is she's more presentable. And that's how you win. When she learns. Very quickly. When Candace first came out, none of her points were landed. Didn't make no, no sense. She was on Joe Rogan's uh and I don't even like Joe Rogan, but she was on Joe Rogan's platform. None of her arguments were concise. Now she yeah. has like, she's basically taken we really great know. talking points from different type of black alternative media, whether they were conservative, liberal, moderate, whatever. And now she's added it into an upgrade in her and how she presents herself. And it's been working. Sin did a great job, I want to say. And again, I didn't because my computer had cut up. So I got to reinstall some programs. But I will give her a round of applause. Uh, Sin was on Twitter and she was in a the space. These brothers were, you know, talking about they were haggling. Let me, let me say this. They were haggling over Candace Owens and the whole Joe Budden thing. Right. And uh, my personal opinion, and, you know, I know a lot of fellas like we can be indoctrinated just as the ladies as well. Right. Even, quote unquote, well-meaning guys will have a hesitancy with pulling triggers on energies like Candace Owens. When I'm talking about intellectually, you know, eviscerating her talking points. Right. I don't have that problem, as you know, guys on thought crimes, but it depends on how you was raised too, right. So they was over here haggling over these talking points and then Sin came on there, cleared the air very quickly. Talked about who she was funded by, sponsored by, and what these groups and how they view black people. They were there trying to, some of them was trying to like broken wing fix her. Or she just needs to be talked to or she's not, you know, I just think she should be able to breathe. This, that, third. Sin got him right there and cleaned it up real quick. Well, thank you, Prince, uh, for saying that, and uh, I appreciate it. And I also, to the guys, I'm glad that they were open for me to just bring my perspective. And there were some men um, who uh, want, who were actually thinking of the same thing, but they couldn't really get a, a, a chance to talk. I do sometimes see in a lot of male spaces, and when it's hip hop involved, they they you know sometimes the guys talk over each other, and I guess it's more of like a guy at a bar type thing. 
But anyway, I uh, didn't uh, enjoy the fact that they allowed me to say what I needed to say and just speak the truth that was there. And also, uh, you, Jax, that's why Prince is saying Candace is the same as Tommy. Look at what you said. Tommy goes in on black women in a non-constructive way. Candace is more constructive. That's my point. That is the upgrade. Yeah, that's the point. To have the same points, but to upgrade it. So I could talk about black pilots and say I agree with Charlie Kirk, but then I can go on Joe Budden and also on the Breakfast Club and other people's platforms and say something different, not even bring that up. I'll bring up the points where people are more aligned with me and not the points where uh, they would be like, you have zero evidence to that. So it's a good point. play. Yeah. You know, that's the point. Um, Tommy Sotomayor is a brick phone and Candace Owens is the iPhone 15. That's why when, you know, initially when I saw her, I was, eh, you know, whatever. But I knew what I was recognizing. And, you know, when she started combing her hair and start putting on blouses and putting on better makeup. And got a cleaner set and she did her nails. Uh, I already knew what was going to take place. You already knew about the upgrades yeah, happening. I, already, and look, and look I at this. knew it. Big Head Science says y'all hating on Candace, but Candace was allowed to pop off on certain people that were black mm -hmm. for a while now. Even when she agreed with Ye, talk about slavery was a choice and all this other stuff. And no one says she was hating. And I this is why I, I talk about like certain stands the hypocrisy the hypocrisy is like what i didn't like when howard stern was able to make uh jokes about black americans and just rip on us but a black american couldn't say any jewish jokes otherwise they would be uh coined an anti-semite so candace can say whatever she wants but if we say something we're a hater this is uh, see this is what i'm saying like at least don't be a hypocrite talk about the points we're saying stop being lost in whether you think you uh we're a hater or not because you're a hypocrite because you allow candace to hate on other people and anyone you agree with you allow them to hate on others like come on let's not be let's not be a hypocrite here yeah and you know the reason why i'm going to tell you something real quick and let me, let me tell you a little secret i'm gonna pause the music real quick let me tell you a little secret when it comes to uh, dark femininity. Uh, it's, it's, it's very special. And, and because we live in such a misogynistic, sexist society, and, and, and actually women and men participate in sexism and misogyny, not at the same level or the same rate, but they do participate it nonetheless, right? There were stories in our neighborhoods um, where there were hit women. You know, because you always hear about, you know, the King Bonds, but don't don't nobody ever talk about the Asian dolls that can pop off in the neighborhoods. Right. And and some of them had, you know, crazy body count because because nobody ever suspected them. You know, I've seen the situation where somebody punched a man in the back of the head and his woman rolled over and came out with a snub nose out of a person. She just started shooting. You know, the first thing the guy did was attack the man. He did not pay attention to his woman. Right in that manner. So I've seen that a lot. The reason why I'm saying this for this particular stance here with the likes of Candace Owens, and I do not, I'm not here to argue with anybody's primitive nature that has been sexually and subconsciously activated by the physical presence of Candace. I do like that about right? her though. You Dominate know? these niggas. Let me stop. Right. The reason why I make this statement, <laughs> the reason why I make this statement, because I'm going to tell you something. It's, it's no difference where cognitive dissonance sets in, you know, and I always say there's a magic to women. There's a genuine magic to men have a magic, too. It's just that what happens with men, men publicly participate in downing other men. Yeah, yeah, That's why head. a lot of times men can't access their magic because men are always not only, you know, in a lot of regards, you see them, quote unquote, do what they do with women. But what is not talked about is how controlling men are of other men's identity publicly Big head, so fight you for get into queen. that yeah so one thing hey prince I, i'm not always the type of friend i don't care if she if, if a guy getting scammed by a cardi b girl or a girl that looked like gabrielle union right i would not get in the way with that because you're tapping into number one people's sexual uh subconscious lower chakra uh, uh ferocity 
And so when you talk about the urges, these 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 urges, right? These urges that people have. Look, there are women that a man is so damn good looking to them. They pay attention to nothing what he says. It has been shown. Good looking people that can be very good looking or people that find themselves subconsciously really attracted to folks. They will let them slide. They usually have a, a lot of stuff though who warns them. But, but 50 yeah. percent of the time, the woman does not listen. The Maybe woman. actually a little bit more than that. Well, that, actually, it's a bigger number. <laughs> it's because, again, even with the to the point of what, you know, we all talked about with, uh, you know, sexism and, and all this other shit. There's a, there's a lot of things that they don't even get a chance to really study with women that they have the same kinks and, and quirks as like, quote unquote, some men. Right. But, you know, people don't think twice to go there and look at it. When it comes to Candace Owens, when she finally cleaned up and she was being more presentable, I don't have nothing else to say because I already know what's about to happen. That's one thing about it. I Look, man, I used to tell friends all and the time. And women going to like that part yeah. about her, seeing the men to say, point. yes, Candace, yeah. yes, Candace, I agree with everything you, you say. say. And you ain't, you ain't even, yeah. you know what? <laughs> Because <laughs> you know I, actually, so what did she say? I like I, that part. I do find funny. I like that about Candace. And think about that. Now, sin. Y'all know what type of woman she is. Now, if she says she likes that part of Candace, imagine, imagine what level of liking, adulation, or in loving behavior the other groups of people or men have concerning Candace that they're not even being honest about. You got to be out of your mind. A lot of people are liars. Nobody can ever do this to me. Man, let the right person that look like something. Lucifer was not an ugly human being. Why you think God said, man, you got to get your bitch ass up out of heaven? A third of the angels, nigga? A third of the angels? So you got to get them up out of there. So listen, and it's most, I have yet, I've seen some ladies say, um, in fact, there's one lady I follow. Matter of fact, great point, Sid. I'm glad you said it. She said the same thing you said. She don't agree with shit Candace says, but she said, I do like how she be doming these bitch-ass niggas. She said that. Everybody is going to have their biases. But, yes, well, when they, like they put it in a more troll, presentable I, manner. I also like that she's trolling the, the people that paid her to troll black people. But I'm 50-50 with that because she's still looking paid opposition because she's still getting paid by Ben and them. So she looking like paid opposition. You know how I am saying. I told you I didn't like I didn't like Elon Musk when he first showed up. Yes, you did. I don't like that motherfucker. That fake Tony Starks, baloney Starks. I don't like him. Same thing with Candace Owens. I could care less about Candace. I know what's working though. And it is pimping. She pimping. It's pimping. She pimping, but also be more wanted to say something. I don't know. I just I feel like I don't like when people don't understand critique versus like hating. And I get it because, like, the internet has been so unfiltered and there's been institutionalized or structured ideas around opinions and stuff that has been, like, really taken away. But, like, me saying something that you did that I don't prefer while you're making content for me to digest is not hating. If I was hating, I would have gotten something that was not for my eyes to view and then have an opinion on it, like her child, her husband, you know, that's hating. You know, you making public content for me to digest and me having an opinion about your opinion that you willingly set in front of the camera for the, for hair, makeup, outfit, all that. That's not hating. She's literally making content. And I feel like also that's like a weird warp of like even the idea of like misogyny, um, even the idea of like what the Internet is, what she actually does for a living. You know, that's her job. You know, that's not hating. And I really would like like for people to really understand that if I started to attack her character, because I don't know that lady, that's a stretch and that is hating. But she also said she's but, an asshole. She called herself an asshole on Joe Budden's uh, uh, podcast. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? But that's her opinion of herself. So that's what I'm saying. Like when people have to grow up with the Internet and I am working on something about the Internet the filterization the science of algorithms and astrology i'm working on something for that and it will be up i am i'm just writing my little notes for it but i do think it's interesting the idea of taste critique and discernment between taste and opinion and how the internet has really warped people ideas around that and even communication and what is actually happening so like if i critique something or have an opinion 
whether I like it all the way because critiques can be good or bad. There is a neutral term. That's around whatever you purposely put out for me to critique. That's not hating. And if you can't understand the difference, then maybe you need to go look for other content that where there's no really pushback or criticism is made. So like, for instance, maybe you should listen to an ASMR video where people mostly going to sleep for 10 hours to it. Because that's not necessarily set up for people to have an opinion on the sound of rain or kitties purring. But if I'm making a video, I'm just imagine me being Candace Owens. I have my press out. And I'm just sitting in front of the camera and I'm here to get smart with Ben Shapiro. Like if I'm doing all of that, then that's intentional, you know, and I think it's weird that you're kind of jamming up. It's the idea that me being a hater jams up what she does for a living. That's what she does for a living. That's weird. It's like if someone said, I don't like pizza, man. You a fucking hater on Italian. You hate. I like, you know, like people like chill. If you say things like it's like even with us, if someone disagrees with, with something we're saying, you have every right to disagree, but don't be emotional and call people a hater because you don't know. I mean, you don't you don't know no one to call them that. And also, uh, people saying Usher look is where Usher is where, especially that Bali shit. Like, and I oh, think yeah. also weird. Like I feel like where I'm going to reverse Uno card this hating part for my closing statements is like you whoever that was with the big head. Um, you caused us stupid, you know. And I just feel like no one called you stupid. So that's hating you. See, you made an assumption I was dumb. I don't know you. Yeah, that's the crazy part of it. You got to keep in mind that you know that's his attraction to that's Candace Owens. Right. That's his. Oh, that's yeah. She's and listen, equal to her whole. I'm an equal opportunist. Everybody getting shot. You can't come to me with no weapon in your hand. Everybody getting shot up. That's what. That's what makes Prince Solomon Prince Solomon. I don't. I don't really care about that. You know, I have family members. There. I mean, I don't care. She's a girl. She opened her mouth. Okay, she opened her fucking mouth and she got roasted. That's what happened. She embarrassed. She crying against the wall. Yo, someone said she said right? black people had low I, lower IQs on the Breakfast Club. Let me look that up. Yeah, so even with that, let me tell you some what's interesting about true. that. You can go ahead and look at. It. I'm gonna finish this part right here. What I'm saying. Here's what's beautiful about it. Again, you can say what you want to say. There are a lot of things that you will you have the culture will overtly say they they will they have no problem the men and women let's let's be clear if a man come out sit on the breakfast club black people got low iqs it would be trending right now whoever that nigga would be oh she did say that right oh they my would God. they would be trending but see this is what i told you all about playing with the dark feminine energy can i tell you what she right? said hold on before you okay. do that, let me just finish this point Candace Owens with the low expectations of women, right? Because there's people that they don't want to give just like they do. Men, they always give them, to, hey, I'm going to give you a challenge, right? She can say her stuff and just, quote, unquote, look pretty in front of the clamor, right? And people are like, yeah, yeah, no, she's doing it again. They played that clip of um, when Charlamagne asked her, what has uh, Donald Trump done for black entrepreneurs and and she talked about regulations and how these regulations get no specifics. But go ahead, Sin. I want to hear what you got to say with this. So Atlanta Black Star. All right. <laughs> did Just Hilarious go off? No. Did Charlemagne go off? Was Call Charlemagne me. did Charlemagne get into his bag? Candace Owens faces backlash after revealing she married her white husband because he matched her IQ. All right, there you go. Clowning black intelligence in our face. Well, you know what's funny about it? The only person that would have given her pushback is not there, and that's Angela Yee. Another woman. Another woman that is, is centered in her identity. Look, this is what I was talking about. Listen, I'm not trying to be funny, and the, the crazy part about dark, just like we always tell everybody, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity. What makes dark femininity very interesting it has to get to a certain level of infection for people to recognize the poison. Now, that woman that sat up there and told y'all in y'all face why everybody was playing with her because she put on her makeup. She was up there trying to look like a fake, cute little brat doll to the public, saying the dumbest shit coming out of her mouth. OK, she didn't sat up there in front of Charlemagne the God's face. She sat up there in front of all of them niggas, them black niggas. That her husband hate. 
that the people that run the network that pay her to spit that fake fuck shit that she do, she done sat up in them niggas' face, proved to their point that they're scared monkeys by their definition is the music that she kick out there. And she told them the Breakfast Club to their face that black people have low IQs. And y'all allowed it because she's a clean faced black woman. And she has weaponized her black femininity against black people. That is my point. That's what it is. All right, let me read one more thing because some people may say, oh, the media's taking it out of context. Okay. She said, for me personally, I never thought of my husband's race. She never thought of him as a race. Okay. For her, she was very impressed with his IQ. Um, it is very interesting to me that I see people go. Uh, she's married. She's married to a white man. I look at my kids. I'm not like, oh, my kids are mixed. I'm married with the, uh, with the person that has made the most sense for me to marry. I have a mind that is just, you know, if you know, if you even know, or if you even knew half the things that I'm talking about or even thinking about, the stuff that I'm reading, just go, 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 go all the time. So she's trying to say that her mind is just always moving, is very advanced, and she needed someone to match that. And she continued in her rambling that people tend to marry their IQ. You know what's funny? Because George Washington Carver and all these black scientists who IQs far surpass her was able to find black partners that match their IQs. They don't nobody really black want to be married to Candace. Fuck that. Stay over there. That spiky haired bald white man you with. <laughs> the fuck her hair goes straight up. What's wrong with him? I don't know. I just feel like it's strange that she would even go on the Breakfast Club saying that You know why. It's a hip hop platform and then she said that she don't really like the music. She don't want to be around it. So and she, she doesn't yeah. want to be around pornographic music. Why are you there? She's looking for traction right now. And no, again, but I mean, I, she's this looking, is just she's the looking point looking of just the hypocrisy. Like, why well, are you going to a country music station? No offense, but like, go somewhere. Be more else, babe. Can you name a country music station? Can anybody name? I a actually can, but. Yeah. Ghost. No, I'm talking about a popular one that that oh, resonates that black with black. Yeah, know. she wants I don't to. Know. She's going to black folks because black people drive the culture. Well, then she see, but she couldn't go to you know what's your uncle name that on the radio station? Who? You know who I'm talking about? They star. Got, they fired him. No, not star. Oh, because star would actually cook her. Um, the other one, the classy one, they got fired. He started a radio station. It's slipping my mind. My, my uncle, they Tavis Smiley. Yeah, because Star would end up roasting her. But go ahead. Okay. Tavis Smiley. Yeah, See, Tavis she can't Smiley. really go because Star would roast her, and then Tavis Smiley would ask penetrating questions that she really can't slide out of. So, like, I think also when doing interviews or the idea of communication. The idea of Mercury is to be of use and purpose. So Mercury is how we communicate, how we think, and how we share our opinion. It's very important in the idea of communication because it's an art that you go in a place where the way you communicate will be receptive, but also the way that person communicates will also be receptive for you. So like like he said, like I went some she went somewhere to go where black people are, true, but she also went somewhere where someone can ask her penetrating questions because that require her to dig deep. So all you guys, even on X or hip hop, that were always making excuses for her, she said, y'all dumb, and I got me a white man because he matched my IQ, and y'all been lusting over her. Woo! Ooh, it must be a dumbass, uh, it must be a dumbass household. <laughs> Shit. I'm just listening. Just some light eugenicist talking points. Well, they they well all all of it is uh, um all of the platform in itself is eugenics, and this is what I'm stating specifically about uh, dark feminine behavior and energy. Dark feminine energy is very penetrating, and people are very slow to recognize, it, or they recognize it, and in the back of their head, they feel I disagree but i can't pull the trigger somehow so well you know uh, just even with this charlemagne would show more pushback if it's a man sitting across from him 
and he's able to recognize the energy directly. Kanye tried to allude to the same thing with his woman. He said, you know, she has a very high IQ. So this is what these dummies basically are listening to. So some white person is pimping them saying y'all have high IQs and that's why we fuck with y'all and not the other blackies. My God. Well, they also sending these slaves into the black house because that was a slave nigga. Yeah, Candace Biden Owens is a slave nigga that they sent to talk to black folk. Right? Yeah. So that's why a lot of times, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't believe in none of the movements the men are saying online concerning their fight against unruly the modern woman. Right? Because that's every bit of Candace Owens. <laughs> that's every bit of Candace Owens is the modern eugenics movement of a woman in, in this regard. Right? We're not talking about... Uh, divine divine feminine nature but then again i also think on the other side of the game a lot of this shit is karma as i told you guys years ago when you guys was on my own channel i said look a lot of y'all are dicking around right now you know maybe the destructive force does return in this regard on this aspect through a woman that she's able to penetrate with these toxic messages and spread her message even further so you got to think in an esoteric, endoteric format. I always, that's why a lot of times you won't hear me just jump on the internet and rant about Candace because a lot of times, eh, it's kind of like the culture's karma in a lot of ways. It's a lot of bullshit. When I see Sexy Red and everybody crying about a WAP and all this other stuff, or when I see Ben Shapiro rapping and, and black hip-hop niggas are angry about it. Ah, but y'all told everybody to shut up about Eminem and the racist tapes and you laughed at Benzino when he had the Source magazine. So who the fuck cares? I mean, I kind of think that the culture has this weird, divine, auto-correcting, karmaic mechanism that it delves itself and delves out. I, and I, I do believe everything that's happening within this quote-unquote culture, it's supposed to happen. What do you think about Ye, though? He said his woman has a very high IQ. Which one? The one that's naked? <laughs> yeah, currently. So they all How we thing. know? We ain't here to speak. Look, I'm just saying this is very interesting that their backers are very focused on saying these are the talented 10th. And they're breathing. Well, how come he lost his Adidas people? deal? <laughs> Because she, I mean, a real woman would have had your back that your Adidas deal would have been Trump tight. Well, <laughs> I mean, what the fuck we talking about? High if, IQs if, have their flaws. Because if I say a high IQ, Sin and B-more got high IQs. We knew never to go into that uh, business deals with those people. Y'all yeah. <laughs> was with First of all, there. you want women that you want a woman or women, whatever your situation is. You want a woman to really love you. And... It's, it's good if she's sharper than you in other areas. You need that. Especially if you guys are going to create a family. Look, Candace Owens, I think she's just as obnoxious as, 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 as uh, Dave Rubin. I think she's just as obnoxious as Young Thug trying to explain why he don't care about black people. I think she's just as obnoxious as any other fucking stooge that was elevated in the algorithm. Right? <laughs> But the other side of the game, a lot of this shit is like a natural karma that's supposed to happen. Because people got to understand some of the shit you just got to let die off. <laughs> you do like, I mean, if Diddy says, I gave the black nigga artist the same deal as the cracker, the white man gave him. If. If Dr. Drake got away with what D. Barnes said he did to her. And the culture celebrates Dre. Dre, Jay-Z gets on the stage and accepts an award on the behalf and in the, in the name and the honor of Dr. Dre. Those same people clap for that moment. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, who am I to try to protect y'all from Candace Owens? Yeah, I'm not protecting y'all from people. <laughs> y'all, it's obvious to not fuck with. Y'all don't want to. Y'all don't want to support people who are for y'all. Uh, I, you know, I already want y'all, but I'm. Look, I told you what makes me laugh about her. She was very bold to say that, you know, to 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 three slow niggas on a platform. But she would not say that to high IQ black people like Tavis Smiley, as B more stated. It's funny that she avoids all of the superior intellectual black people 
uh, just to, to, to go on the Bummy Breakfast Club, but because it's very popular and slow. That's what she I'm saying. Even, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, B. Like, she wouldn't even go on Gail. Because Gail, mm-hmm. you know, say what you want about Gail. She will ask you some decent questions. Well, she knows she would lose. And Gail would, you know, first off, she would wear a good auntie wig because she's been wearing a good auntie wig. So, you know, she's not playing. And she actually resonates with Black America versus Candace. She Candace do. does. She, she Candace. Gail, does, mess around, Gail does mess around, but she is way more classy um, publicly in her image, how she handled her I'm going to be honest and, with um, you all. Candace. You're right. You're right. Any woman in a pantsuit is bold. They are. I told y'all them corporate girls be nasty. They They're not are bold, bold enough to talk shit to two other white men. You know, and well, because they bold enough to keep the money. <laughs> That's what they bold enough to do. Look again, this is all a part of culture. And honestly, the Breakfast Club is supposed to get human. They they were supposed to get dog white. They they supposed to get dog walk. This by, is another L for the prince. How many yeah. L's they gonna keep getting? Shit. As long as Charlemagne's sitting in that seat. <laughs> Send it up, niggas. I also wanna say too, just like on an esoteric level. Yeah. Um, what you said about women is accurate because women being ruled by like the Venus sign. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll talk about moon later because moon is also synonymous. It is synonymous with women, but in particularly like a more fertile woman or a woman who gives birth, but the Venus or the young woman is basically the sun symbol with a plus sign and it's a physical manifestation of the ego or what would be presented as like the father or maleness. And so she she is supposed to radiate like a manifestation of that. And oftentimes I find when people have weakened Venus signs, they can have issues with combinations or dealing with men or in their combination of their femininity when dealing with that or... um the father something happened with the father and how it affects them the same could be said for boys but it has less to do more so with their dynamics of um their femininity in that type of way it can also present into how well the boys make money or men make money in their combination or the projections on psychologically onto the mother um not saying that they see their mom as a venus but it's a whole thing but how they um what type of woman they're attracted to and what they necessarily would go after um could be a thing or maybe the comfort and love especially if they the men aren't necessarily straight what type of lovers or romance that they go after because the father is supposed to present a certain archetype for people and understanding like the idea of like what a man is supposed to give he's supposed to give stability and comfort in some dynamics um so that way the children can be comfortable so the type of structures the father builds will determine a lot about how you present venus in combination with the mom so if your dad is raggedy um in combination with your mom it it does present a lot of ideas around your forms of sexuality how you handle your dynamics with women how women have um how they see themselves in their body images, um, how they handle sexuality with other men. Like, so if a father is necessarily like pig, like this can create or like absentee or have weird dynamics with a daughter, this can create a dynamic with power, sex and money. And so oftentimes when the father is having these types of themes, you can see this often cases in the daughter. Now I remember I posted on my community tag months ago, um books about the idea of father hunger and how it presents in men and women and what are the dynamics with that but there's a a, even esoterically when you look at people's charts i can instantly tell when the father is weird something is up with Mm -hmm. the dad because it presents in a way that is very bizarre and every time i do that every time i look i'm like something was up with the dad in relationship to the mom and this is why your Venus is like this. This is also your Venus sign is also associated with how you see yourself. So sometimes it's harder to make money because it could be issues with the self-esteem or the internal self-image. And that is poorly represented because the dad was weird. The dad was gone. The dad had weird self-esteem, too. So maybe you internalize his poor self-esteem, even if he was around. Like, it's a whole lot of that. I no, that is absolutely true. She was bold enough to try to insinuate that black men had low IQs. Well, she and wouldn't exactly. be the uh, she wouldn't be the first black sambo to do that. Most of them, I mean, look at Mark Robinson um, out there in North Carolina, and you know, uh, he's married to a, a linebacker, you know, <laughs> and, and listen to what he said. He's talking about going back to a time he said it himself where black people was hanging from trees. He said swinging from trees. So this is clearly the energy that is um, being venerated right now. And the reason why at the end of the day, 
there's nothing for me to dissect with Candace Owens because let me tell you something. You have to know when to keep moving on. We're going to have a certain level of individuals that are going to defend her. And then you have sexuality and confusion and also projection tied to a particular figure. That right there creates mind control. That's where you get into mind control. When people are projecting and they're living vicariously through someone, there's sexuality tied to these people that are objects uh, of their imagination. People sit up and think about them. They always agree with them. They always, yes, she's right. Oh, he's right. Yes, she's right. He's right all the time. There's really not much you can do about it for, you know, just to be honest with you. Now, yeah. where Sin and I come in wow. at, and, and along with B-more uh, as well, all three of us, when we talk about it, the only thing I want to just point out to the individuals, I'm just going to I always talk about the institutions that support these people. And then we bring up their doctrines and their creeds. You cannot hide that. No matter if you get Candace Owens. Y'all tried it with Stacey Dash. She was too dumb. Stacey Dash was too dumb. They tried to prematurely roll around on Fox News. They tried it with Harris Faulkner. Harris Faulkner says, I just want to be an anchor woman, and that's it. I want to talk like Oprah with my big wigs on Fox News and my long legs shined up in front of the camera forever. And that's it. You couldn't get her to do anything else. They rolled Stacey Dash out there. They had her out there in front of everyone, and they tried to get her to talk some of the same talking points that Candace Owens is holding a little better than Stacey Dash. Stacey Dash kept catching L's every time where black media was just cooking it to the point where she just said, all right, I quit. I was Joe. I was fucking around. But as... All of the machines do like they do in the Matrix. They will upgrade their messiahs all the time. So Elon Musk they saying will, yeah. black people have low IQs. Yeah. Uh, they're saying black pilots have low IQs. Mm -hmm. Then Candace Owen goes on the Breakfast Club and insinuate black men have low IQs. This is some interesting uh, agenda. Uh, this uh, is an agenda. Uh, right. This is, this is called. Uh, you know what this is called? This is called a campaign. I can't believe that, and I can believe, but I can't believe and can believe that they will allow her to say that shit under their noses and not catch it. Why? That is crazy. Why? 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 You know, you, the reason why I, I, we, we always talk about what we accept, you know, um, I accept, number one, that the lead patriarch of your particular platform is Charlemagne the God. That's a no, that's an L right there. Okay, you're not gonna really get much out of that, no matter how many footlocker niggas or aspiring podcasters kiss up to Charlemagne. You're not getting much out of the platform. Okay. When they tried to roll him out to have presentable questions for Kamala Harris, all he did was, you know, just become offensive by his ignorance because you can tell by Kamala, by her what she deals with, she perceives Charlemagne as politically dumb. And I'm they not saying do. I'm they not saying all of them do. Yeah, I, and Biden I'm not is, even saying Kamala Harris is right, but everybody look how Biden look what he said to him. Also, what's that? He said you guy? ain't black. Larry too, Larry Elder. Larry Elder was so annoyed. Everybody has put they <sighs> they all have embarrassed him from the left. He has been the most He's the most embarrassing broadcaster listen, about politics by the left and the right. Everyone Charlemagne saw this has become home. Charlemagne is the most sidekicked nigga <laughs> politically we have ever seen. <laughs> everybody come through and bang on his ass. Okay, everybody. Here you come with a scammer, Candace Owens, a scammer, and I saw the energy of the, everybody in the room at the Breakfast Club. She. It, Unfortunately, she was flexing on them and wasn't saying anything. Wasn't saying anything at all. She was speaking in vague uh, connotation, hyperboles, right? Doing a lot of gaslighting. Oh, beautiful. The level of gaslighting that she was doing, it was, oh, it was PSNEG, right? So, as it stands, I'm going to be honest with you all. You have people on the right that they're pushing forward with this far right agenda. They're using far right people that believe whether they're black, white, Jew, um, preferably quietly gay. You know, because, again, the celebrated gays, that's still, that's still a little too liberal. 
you know, the log cabin Republicans, we're going to roll them down the hill. You know, we don't, yeah, we don't really want to care because you guys feel like you're kind of marginalized, like the blackies, the wokes. And that's where you are right now. So, again, you know, I'm not all that surprised. And uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, Charlemagne's having this sissy fight with Joe Budden. Plugging this back in. You told me to tell you so you can't. Come on, play. Sid. All right, but you got it. All right, go ahead. What are you about to say, sweetie? Oh, no, no. Keep telling your point. I'm just letting you know I was yeah. putting the mic back in. <laughs> but anyway... Um, what was it say? Oh yeah, they, they, they have a political fight. Yeah, there's a sissy fight that's going on over there. You know, Joe Budden has the Candace Owens interview, and he he debuts the trailer on um, Patreon, and then Candace is making her rounds uh, to uh, the Breakfast Club. Well, you know? what she did it was very slick though, because one could just say, oh, she's saying she she just dates men who IQ matches hers, but. Yeah. Uh, everybody we, from the right They have been doing this IQ conversation With black men and black people As a whole so Elon Musk been on it The Daily Wire has been on it And it's interesting that that is the one thing the Daily Wire And her agree on so You see what I'm saying you was talking about right, Her still being hired yeah. by the Daily Wire Yeah and also if you pay attention Cause remember now Charlemagne has been flirting With the right The Breakfast Club as a, you know, again, these these people are trying to flirt with other aspects. Because if they feel they hey, look, hey, listen, I gotta play. I'm trying to play my role here. We've seen academics play with it by go over there with Rumble, him merging with Myron Gaines and uh, the little short stooge. So everybody's trying to grift right now. They're all playing a grifting uh, game. So I'm not all that surprised. Candace Owens and Tommy Sotomayor is pretty much the, they're running on the same firmware. The only difference is the body of the phone is looking a little different. That's it. You know, but we'll post more. We're going to be talking more about some of these things on our Patreon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, where we cannot talk about it here on Walt Disney YouTube because we're not sponsored like uh, Candace Owens by the Daily Wire. Okay. And uh, you guys get, you know, authentic talking points from us, too, by the way. And not only that, again, tomorrow at 7, 7 o'clock, we will cover the Nickelodeon situation. B. Moore is going to be running the game down about some of the things she had a finding on. And Sid has been doing research as well. And I'm going to be there offering my perspectives and things that I see also. And we're going to be having that conversation on our Patreon. As you guys understand that we told you all before, this channel is demonetized because, again, some of the talking points that are being elevated in the algorithm right now, the paid algorithm or multi-algorithm, uh, we just refuse to speak into. By the way, we just keep everything authentic and clear like we normally do. Give you all great content for you all to enjoy, uh, whether you're getting through your night shift or whatever the case is. And again, it's nothing wrong to experience the content that you hear online. Candace Owens, if you're listening, uh, y'all listen to Candace Owens. Y'all do what y'all need to do. If you go listen to whoever besides that, outside that, it's fine. But understand, as Sam pointed out, there is a campaign right now overtly about low IQ blacks low intellectual quotient blacks now i actually think the cq with these people that are trying to push this low iq agenda is pretty low as well the creative quotient that is an actual uh, measurement as well the creative quotient is flatline this is why a lot of this shit is born this is why a lot of them go to the same talking point why do you think brett Favre, with his old ignorant country ass when he decided to start off a podcast the first thing he starts off on his podcast anti-woke talking agenda points same thing as aaron Rodgers, anti-woke talking uh, uh agenda points the same thing with candace anti-woke this anti-woke that you even saw it with the breakfast club breakfast club war wokeness they wore it. Oh, man, they, they had that damn woke pimp cape on. T.I. was making uh, pro-black music and everybody, oh, woke, woke, woke. And then when they wanted to shed it, they was like, oh, we're so sick of the word problematic. Now we don't want to talk about problematic. Oh, we don't want to talk about the word because you guys are tired. It's all a griff. It's all a griff. That's why they're more receptive. They didn't really challenge Candace Owens over there. 
they're trying to play these the center of the road thing just in case they feel which way it may go that they think they're going to get their portion but as sin and now when it came to the politics we told you all what the heritage foundation put out there and we covered it when donald trump was elected selected and we talked about the cabinet even when he was running sin and i we did a breakdown of Trump's potential cabinet picks. And we said there are a lot of people within this pick that have far right ideology. We spoke about Steve Bannon. We talked about that. We talked about Cambridge Analytica. We talked about that. Candace Owens ain't talking about that shit. She ain't gonna touch that shit. She's gonna touch it now because you said it. <laughs> Probably will, right? <laughs> right? But the whole point is this, a lot of these people out here, the reason why they stay in true to a specific talking point is because they are getting sponsored and paid. Okay, that's what they're doing right now. That's all they're doing. It's no different when you see Tiffany Cross and Andrew Gillum and, and uh, Angela Rybread start their podcast up. We should probably also play that trailer again on the way out. You're right, like love. Really all right, anything you got to say, beautiful? No, I'm ready to chill. What about you, beautiful? Hey, guys. Um, I did a PDF on some companies and things that I saw with certain financial shifts with uh, Jupiter and Venus. That is on my Patreon. It's also on um, Thought Crimes Patreon. I also, I'm going to be working on uploading some stuff onto Patreon, talking about the new morning Pisces. Um, Venus and Pisces and some other placements and gearing up for the eclipse at the end of this month and Venus retrograde um, towards the end of the beginning of April. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. And to let everybody know, originally we had it set up for us to break down and talk about the fight, the lyrical fight in the bars between Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole. Shouts out to Night Night. He kept being persistent about this particular, it seems to be oncoming or active battle. Um, you know and you know we went over to what's the dirt i had a chance to watch the video and i was like, well goddamn i you know some of the bars i kind of figured oh, that kind of sound like you know one's talking about the other but you didn't put too much stock in it because like i said earlier you know both of the niggas are kind of dressed alike so you kind of like well maybe they all friends with each other i don't know but um we will be having and talking about the cole and k dot battle for the hip-hop heads i know we have a lot of hip-hop heads they love it just to let you guys know 9 a.m monday 9 a.m monday you can actually hit the notification button for this particular stream 9 a.m monday we're gonna have fun it's gonna be a shindig ladies and gentlemen we're just gonna be it's just gonna be an easy cool stream for y'all for you, you people early in the morning that are going to work um also, I did see the new joint dropped by uh, Big Sean. Interestingly enough, it sounds like he's taking shots at Kendrick. So maybe Big Sean didn't appreciate, you know, when he, I guess, when he rapped on the song and he talked about how him and Kendrick squashed the beef, the song he has with Nipsey Hussle on the Detroit too, which I think is uh, Big Sean's best body of work. And then Kendrick had, or his team released the unreleased diss record and people was like, damn, Kendrick would have smoked him. See, it sounded like he was about to say something. No, I agree. Yeah, so uh, it looks like Big Sean is, is is trying to be that fourth. It, you know, it was really supposed to be the big four, the four horsemen, but ben, Big Sean's career had been so inconsistent. So that now that's why there's just a big three. So we'll talk about this. This is going to be, the, when you see this thumbnail, this is for Monday, 9 a.m i know people's like what about today we had some technical issues and there's some other things we want to add to the stream this will be for monday 9 a.m and again for tomorrow on patreon patreon on patreon esoteric tier i want y'all to remember that patreon esoteric tier we're going to be talking about nickelodeon we're going to be talking about nickelodeon this just that's what we're going to be talking about nickelodeon matter of fact we up out of here we love you all y'all take care peace Go ahead, Sin, say it. 
What are we saying? Yeah, the PDF is on the um, esoteric tier on um, thought crimes. So everyone who's on the esoteric level already is already up there. The PDF, yes. Anyone else wants to join to get it is already, you know, it'll it already be on there. All right, and just to tell them briefly for those people that don't know quickly, what's in the P, uh, the PDF, bait? Yeah, so we'll be talking about the transits that'll be happening around May, particularly the, under the guise of Jupiter being in Gemini and Venus being in Gemini, and just certain companies or things that will probably be having a shift and fortune and wealth mm -hmm. so basically if you track certain planets where they go it basically you follow the money i know people always say that but it's the thing for charts too you can follow the money um as long as you track certain things you know where the money or the quote-unquote luck is going so i basically made a pdf for people to follow the luck and to invest in those things if they want to or they can put together where they have it in a chart where it will show up in their chart and how to tap into it if even if they're not interested in investing in some of the stuff I put together in the chart, they can figure out what they need to do to get that lucky streak. So that's what's gonna happen. All right, yo, we are about of here. Y'all take care. Peace. Coming through your airwaves. Mm -mm, nasty, disgusting. Are you following me? Some sickening, sickening, disgusting news. I just got through watching that nasty, that nasty, that dog filth, disgusting documentary about Dan Snyder. Mm -hmm. Just as I thought a Snyder would pull this off. This is disgusting. That disgusting, wide pork belly X Man blob built villain was out here hurting the little children. Are you following me? Join us on Patreon as B more sincere ignorance and book it, book it, Brent Solomon breaks down what's going to be taking place concerning why these nasty brutes lord over children. Are you following me? I bet you didn't know the esoteric meaning of Nickelodeon and how it ties into dysfunctionality with the children. Mm -mm. Let me guess who is the CEO? The Pod Piper himself? It seems like these sick men have a thing constantly with children and struggling tales of Hansel and Gretel. Dan Schneider looking at his wide belly. How many children did he eat? Are you following me? Mm -mm -mm. Join us on Patreon. Join us Friday. That's Friday. That's Friday. That is going to be March 22nd at 7 p.m. And I, ugh, I'm already getting sick, but I'm going to leave it to them three. They're better than me. I can't do it.